Skill synthesis was completed and the system window began to shine brightly. Han looked at all this and was extremely surprised. The force breakthrough rank D skill has been created. Han stood there in shock and didn't understand how it all came out. He read everything that was written in the system message. It said that the skill's proficiency was 0%, an effect that Han could break through unknown farm deterrents, such as skills and unique stats. However, the user's magic must be higher than the level of magic used for containment. Han thought that he would be able to breathe a sigh of relief if he got even an E-rank skill, but he added up two F-ranks to get a D-rank. He smiled and realized that it really was just perfect. He clicked on the system screen and wondered if he could try again. He chose Ranger Training Skill and Burn Resistance. He clicked on Continue Synthesis and Skill Synthesis was completed. The window began to shine brightly again, and Han looked with interest at what his results would be right now. He looked up and saw how he had made a new skill called Strong Eye of Ranky. The effect of this skill allowed Han to ensure some visibility, even in bad conditions. His vision will become sharper. Han thought about it and realized that the skill currently created was only one step higher than the ones that were selected for synthesis. He began to think about it and assumed that it was something else. He started to think back on his previous skills and realized that the previously synthesized contempt for the weak and continuing the battle went well together. But the combination of ranger training and burn resistance skills wasn't the best and didn't really fit together. He realized that with just one glance, it was obvious that they were completely incompatible. After that, he lay down on the bed and threw his hands behind his head, realizing that he had gone from holding the status of a pioneer to receiving the reward in the form of a halo, but for some reason he felt somehow strange. He lay on the bed and wondered if he really had achieved everything by his own efforts, or if he was just lucky to have a unique stat. He looked ahead and thought silently, after which he got out of bed and realized that he needed to stop lying around and stop thinking about all sorts of nonsense. He realized that it was better to check the reward received. He opened the Wind Grace skill and started reading it. The effect was that when Han said the name of the skill, all the speed points increased by 10%. This effect could be summed up, and this ability could be played up to 7 times. However, when the limit was reached, a 24-hour cooldown was automatically activated. Han thought about it and wondered about the 10% increase in all speeds, because it was just amazing. He was shocked to realize that he could summon the skill 7 times. He looked ahead and realized that he could increase any speed by 70%. He began to rejoice and realized that this skill didn't use any mana at all. He clicked on the system screen and realized that the grace of the wind was, in fact, a science that had no disadvantages, but only some advantages. He looked in his inventory and took out a pair of boots. They were speed boots of rank C+. They increased attack speed by 3% and movement speed by 5%. The boots were made with magic, with small wings that increased speed. When exceeding a certain speed, its speed be instantly increased. He looked at these shoes and realized that all the rewards on the seventh floor were related to speed and he was very happy with this arrangement. The system message says that you have logged into the skill store. It started displaying a list of skills that were available for purchase. Han looked at the skill list and realized that there were bad skills such as strengthening, unwavering, monster hide, weapon enchantments, instant acceleration, magic chain, mana barrier, increased visual acuity. Not only were they bad, but their prices were also huge. Han started to review everything and realized that giving 7,000 for instant acceleration was not normal, but nevertheless he clicked on the button and bought this skill since he needed to have related skills with magic. He bought the magic chain skill and 15,000 was deducted from his account. He bought a drug called magic resistance and had 12,000 debited from his account. The magic resistance skill had this effect. Resistance to magic was created throughout the body, and resistance to other people's magic was increased. But if Han didn't have the magic chain skill, the effect was significantly reduced. Han looked at all of this and realized that now that he had the magic resistance skill, he wouldn't be caught off guard by something like the unique characteristic, heart fusion, which had caused him to have a hard time in the last battle. He was also given an arithmetic chain, which gave the effect that the mother's body gathered into a chain and increased the efficiency of using mana. Han Sen felt a flood of energy flowing everywhere inside him. The magic chain engraved were the beginning of Han. Han started to tense up and realized that his entire body was on fire. He started to emit bright red rays, then everything calmed down and he got out of bed. He held his hand out in front of him and looked at it, and realized that he was feeling very light. He went forward and stood in the middle of the room, he raised his foot and threw punches to the floor. A shockwave swept through the room, and Han was surprised that the mana used to randomly form chains boosted his physical abilities. He destroyed the floor where he had just struck, and then he clenched his hand into a fist and was glad that, as he expected, he had made a successful purchase. After the system message wrote that Khan could use the spirit of the deceased to resurrect the dead person nearby. At the time of resurrection, the dead person's level will be proportional to the quality and number of souls consumed. 
Han started reading all of this and realized that he was extremely curious and curious about what this new ability of summoning the dead was. He started flipping through the system screen and realized that it would be better to get acquainted with it in practice. He closed his eyes and realized that he now had an important decision to make. He looked straight ahead with a serious gaze and wondered if he should challenge the next floor now or if he should just return to Earth. At the same time, a guy was sitting on a bench and looking at his phone. Ads for team recruitment were opened in the phone. Emergency portal in the Great Cataclysm Memorial Park. They were looking for a tank and a hunter healer rank D and higher. The guy was nervous and biting his nails. He didn't understand why there was no response. After that, he became alert when he saw someone in front of him. He raised his head and saw the man who had approached him. One of them asked him if he still couldn't build a team for himself. They told him that he should tell us if he was wrong. One of them smiled broadly and said that if the dungeon raid didn't start, then after the set time, the right to enter would be automatically revoked. Afterward, he asked why he didn't just charge the appropriate fee and hand the passes over to them. The guy looked and realized that these fools again decided to take up their own. He looked ahead and wondered how many more times he had to repeat that he had no intention of handing over his pass to anyone. They told him to shut up and call him a fool. There were a lot of people in this place, and he said that there were quite a lot of people in the park, but why was no one eager to join the guy's team? One of the men put his hand to his head and said that he would answer that guy directly. He said that that guy was just an E-rank hunter, and with someone like him in the first team, no one would want to be there. The guy was shocked by what he heard. He watched the dark silhouettes of the laughing boys and listened to everything they said about him. They said he was too cocky. After that, the guys were surprised when they heard that someone asked about recruiting for the team. They looked and saw Hana walking towards them. He walked up to them and showed them his C-rank hunter ID. He looked at them and asked if it was enough to join the guy's team. The guy looked at him and got up from the bench. He said that Khan fully met his requirements for joining the team. The guy who had just called the other person names put his hand on Han's shoulder and asked, was there a line of people waiting here? Han smiled, and the guy viciously said that if he was unhappy about something, then why didn't he apply to Lee Chalwan's team? The guy got angry and asked what he said. Han turned and glared at him. He told the guy to get his hand off his shoulder quickly, or he was going to break it. Han started to emit a vicious red aura, and the guy who was holding the forbidden was shocked by it. He started to pull his hand away and wondered what kind of intimidating energy it was, he wondered if Han was exactly the same hunter, with a rank like himself. The other guys looked at him in surprise and were shocked by such a powerful energy. These guys thought it was their friend's energy. The boy looked awkwardly at his companions and knew that this was not his doing. He started coughing uncomfortably and said that since there were representatives from the Hunter Association present, he would take this prank from Han this time and just leave. He turned to his companions and told them to let Han know that he was just lucky this time and couldn't take it any other time. Friends were surprised by such an act from their comrades, they left. Han looked at the guy who was holding his hair, and the guy wondered why everything had gone wrong in the first place. Han called out to Hunter Call One, who looked at him. Han said that judging by the situation, it seemed to him that he would not be able to find anyone else to join his team, after which he suggested not to drag out the rubber and just enter the portal together. Vaughn was surprised by this statement, and he pointed at each other and asked if they were really going together. After which, they had already passed through the portal and entered the cave. Han glanced back and saw that Vaughn was looking around in all directions and couldn't believe that it was really just the two of them going inside. Han said that they just didn't need to worry so much and Han would be able to deal with most of the rank D monsters. Vaughn looked in his direction and asked if it was really Han's first time in the dungeon. Han said that this was the case even though, in fact, the Tower of Trials and the dungeon were one and the same. Vaughn began to reason and said that at first glance, his words might seem tactless to Han, but their lives were at stake, so he had to listen to him and understand. Han looked at him in silence and began to listen. Vaughn asked Han who he thought had the highest death rate in the dungeon, an E-rank hunter or a hunter. With rank, Vaughn looked serious and said that at first glance it might seem like an E-rank hunter would probably die, but in reality, a C-rank hunter has a much higher death rate. The E-rank hunters were extremely cautious because they knew that they were weak even while the hunters were. The S-rank were too confident in their abilities, they might not expect much and eventually moderate. Therefore, the probability of death in hunters, C rank is extremely low. The same thing could be seen in real life, because the more confident the driver is behind the wheel, the higher the probability of getting into an accident than a novice. Vaughn looked down and said that the place called the dungeons was much more dangerous than Han actually thought. Vaughn said that since Han had ventured into the dungeon without a tank or healer, he was even more concerned about Han's overconfidence. Han said that there was logic in his words, and Vaughn said that although he was an E-rank hunter, he had a lot of experience visiting dungeons, so he could take on the role of the leader of their group. Han looked at him, and he realized that he himself wanted to be in charge. 
He said he agreed, and Vaughn bowed to him and thanked him for his understanding. He said that he did it for everyone's safety, so he hoped that his suggestion didn't spoil Han's mood. After that, he suggested that we continue through the dungeon. Han decided to trust him first. After some time, they met the lizardman Luda in front of them, who was standing in front of them with a spear and shield. Vaughn stiffened and said that the lizard people were famous for using various weapons in their hands. He said that it was bad enough that the lizard people became their opponent. Luda Lizard was standing right in front of them, ready to attack. Vaughn said that first he would draw all the attention of this monster to himself, and Han would know when to attack as soon as he opened his back. Han said that he understood everything, but then he thought about it and decided to see how an experienced hunter would deal with such monsters. The monster moved forward, and Vaughn did the same. He started swinging and punching in the air. Luda Lizard stood there and didn't understand what was happening. Vaughn just kept hitting nothing. Han, looking at all this, assumed that he was just measuring the strength of the spirit. He looked at it and realized that the temporary return to Earth only took three days, and he was now having to waste his precious time because of some insignificant lizardman. Han started walking forward and Vaughn noticed it. He looked at him and Han said he needed to step in. Vaughn said that if Han was suddenly intervened in the fight, he would be in great danger. He used instant acceleration and headed towards the monster. Han was behind the monster in just a second and landed a lot of punches, thus defeating the monster. Vaughn stood there and watched in shock. He was watching Han, who was standing next to the dead monster. Han said that he intervened because he was in a hurry and he thanks Vaughn for understanding. They were standing near the monster's severed body and talking. Vaughn said that he understood perfectly well and that he might have had his own reasons for doing so. Han said that he still wanted to make one sentence, he asked for permission to voice it, and one agreed with a nod. Han pointed at herself and asked if he could take over the leadership role from now on. After that, we see how many monsters ran headlong in the direction of Khan, but he quickly rushed to kill one after another. Han quickly moved forward, after which he jumped up and threw crushing blows to one of the monsters in the back. Vaughn, watching all this, was shocked. He looked at the concentrated Han and realized that this was just a one-sided massacre. Han continued slaughtering the monsters and walking forward. He struck out with sweeping blows and chopped off the last monster's head. Vaughn watched all of this and assumed that he might have just witnessed the battle of a super rookie who had a huge talent that would probably shake up the hunter industry in the future. Han started cutting up the monster's bodies and taking them out into green crystals. The system message said that these were mana stones. These were magic stones that contained muddy magi gathered from the lizardman's heart. Depending on its use, it could be of great help in metallurgy and alchemy. Han loaded all the magic items into Vaughn's back. Vaughn holding the backpack asked to part from acting as a porter it wasn't of any use he said. He looked at Han and said that he wouldn't say a word if Han wanted to make more profit. Han wanted to talk about the profit, and then, at the same time, a monster came at him and swung its sword to attack Hana. Han easily dodged and hit the monster on the head, the blow was so strong that the monster went into the ceiling. Han stood and watched the monster as rocks fell from above, and Vaughn covered his head. Han looked at his companion and told them to talk about it outside, and if they let their guard down, they might find themselves in a dangerous situation. Vaughn apologized, and Han just wiped the dirt off himself. The system message said that he had absorbed the lizardman's spirit, then one more and was maxing out his skill. Han was absorbing all the souls and realized that he should have pretended to yawn and just absorbed the souls that he had just knocked out. He held his hand near his mouth and realized that the boost was 0.07%. He realized that with D-class monsters, it would take him a very long time to raise the skill of his unique stat. After that, they stood in front of the red portal. Vaughn asked if he was really going to do it. Future only the two of them were able to reach the portal that led to the boss room. Vaughn started to get excited and realized that he hadn't even thought about raiding the boss, or rather, he had thought from the very beginning that it would be a great success if they were able to overcome even half of the entire dungeon. He looked at Hana, who was standing there silently looking ahead, and began to guess that the person who was just standing in front of him would have no trouble clearing out this dungeon completely. Han turned around and said that they were going to raid the boss now. He asked if Vaughn was happy with this scenario. He said that he was fine with everything, but he thought that Han should have taken a little break before this event. Khan said that there was absolutely no need for it, he said that he was absolutely fine. After that, he offered to enter the portal. They entered it and found themselves in front of a huge lizardman monster that was sitting on a huge throne with two spears in its hands. He started to get up gradually, and Han realized that everything was as he had anticipated. Vaughn looked ahead and asked what he was going to do now. Han looked ahead and asked for some time to think. Vaughn started to get nervous and asked really, Han wanted to say that he didn't have any clear plan of action at this point. At the same time, the monster began to growl and swing its weapon to attack Hana. Han smiled and realized it was just in time. After that, the monster immediately rushed towards Han. 
Han looked at it in surprise and started scaring it away while the monster that attacked left behind blue rays. Han jumped out of the way and realized that the monster was very fast, which was quite surprising considering its size. Han confidently looked at him and didn't realize that even though he was fast, he wasn't fast enough for Han to match his battle pace. At the same time, Han was behind the monster and started swinging to stab it in the back. After that, we immediately reacted and attacked him with our tail. The monster hit him with such force that he flew against the wall. Vaughn was shocked by this, and he grabbed his head with his hands and called out to Hana. From the ruins, Han pushed away the stone, and it stood in front of the monsters emitting the aura of souls. The system message said that the spirit had absorbed the damage dealt to the user. Han looked at him with a smile and said that he thought it was a good way to test his new skills. Vaughn stood there, glad to the point of tears that Han was still alive. The monster looked at him, then Han started to slowly walk forward towards it and realized that there was nothing left of the boss's throne. He looked at the broken throne and said it was an ominous omen. The monster began to roar in anger and began to emit a sinister aura. Vam looked up, and he released a purple beam that shook the ground. Han took a look at all of this and the system message said that he had undergone the slow wave skill interaction. All of Han's speed had been reduced by 25%. The chains began to break around Han and he activated the force breakthrough skill. Han was covered in a green sphere and now had more than two times the magic power of a slow skill user. The monster, he looked at it in surprise, and Han realized that the analog was the result of fusion, so he had some doubts about it, but its effectiveness was simply top-notch. The monster looked ahead, and then a scream rang out. It was Vaughn's scream. He was lying on the ground and his hands were bound with chains. He said his body wasn't working properly and he couldn't control himself. He looked at Hana in a frightened way with a trembling body and asked him for help. The monster looked to the side, and Han told him to stop. The monster immediately chose its target and headed towards Vaughn. Han rushed forward and told the lizardman to fight him, because he was his opponent. He quickly tried to outrun the monsters and he realized that the distance was too great. He looked ahead and then it dawned on him. His gaze changed abruptly, and he used the summon the dead skill. After which, a whole army of undead appeared around the helpless Vaughn who glared at the lizard viciously and attacked with their weapons. Well, the monster easily dealt with all the non-life and cut them into pieces. Han looked at the remains of the summoned dead and realized that they didn't have the strength to stop such a huge monster, but he was still able to buy a couple of seconds with them. The system message says that the summation of the wind grace skill is taking place. All speed was increased by 60% and the current summation progress was 6 sevenths. After that, Han threw a few slashing blows and chopped the monster into pieces. Thanks to the dead, he was able to save a human life. The wizard was chopped into pieces and the dungeon boss Lizard King was defeated. The next dungeon was supposed to appear in 14 days. Han used absorption from the spirit of the Lizard King to permanently increase his stats and strength increased by 1, agility increased by 1, stamina increased by 4, mana increased by 4, stamina increased by 5. Han was surprised when he realized that he had absorbed one of the Lizard King's skills. This was the spiritual eye skill, and the effect of this skill was such that Han could recognize attacks in an invisible range when entering battle. At this time, we see a man sitting on a bench and yawning. He said that with the exception of the fact that all three portals appeared at the same time, nothing special basically happened. He looked back and called out to the man who was standing near the portal, he asked if they noticed anything unusual. The man said that nothing was suspicious. The man on the bench looked ahead and realized that everything was as usual, after the advance party hunters made a partial raid in the portal that opened and went outside. The hunter association's attacking team would have to break into the dungeon and kill the boss. He sat on a bench and said that everyone seems to be a member of the same hunters association, but for some reason only their team does not have a commission fee. Rotten to the core fools because of the attacking team, Envy made him want to bite his elbows. The man happily looked ahead and said that if the advance party completely cleared the portals in the first quarter, then their control team would also be able to get their share. He looked down with his eyes closed and said that this was only possible with an rank hunter. He wondered if there would be one such high-class hunter who would pull such a crazy stunt. Then I sold out and Han started going out with Vaughn. The guy on the bench looked to the side and was told that the third portal advance party had completed the sweep, he was surprised that they did it so quickly. He was shocked that these guys only went to the dungeon together, but he realized that the group couldn't even get halfway there. But his guesses were not like that, after he saw that the portal began to change its color, he realized that they had completely cleared this dungeon. He was pleasantly surprised by this, and then he ran up to them. He ran up to Han and asked if they really had completely cleared the dungeon. Han asked who he was to give them such questions. The man stood up and straightened his tie. He apologized and said that he had forgotten to introduce himself. He said that his name was Shim Woo Jin, and that he was the head of the portal control team from the Hunters Association, which had come here to take control of the sudden portals in this park. 
Bon held out his hand and asked if he could be here because he wanted to buy the rights to occupy the portal. Wu said it was true, he wanted to make offers for the two of them to sell. Bon looked ahead, holding a backpack full of crystals, and said that he didn't have the right to make such a decision in this matter. Wu was surprised by this, and then he asked if Hunter Han had taken over this dungeon by himself. He assumed that Han was an A-rank hunter, but Han said that he was just a C-rank hunter, but he thought that wasn't the most important thing right now. Han looked at him and asked how much he wanted to buy the rights I sold. Han knew that if it became known that he was from the Tower of Trial, it would only cause unnecessary problems. Wu put his hand to his chin and thought about it, he said that if we go back to the main thread of the conversation, their portal control team wanted to buy the rights to occupy the portal from him for 120 million won. Han was shocked by the amount, after we see someone put a lot of books on the table. It was the girl who was dragging them onto the table. She said that after returning from the tower, all she did was plow like a horse. She looked ahead and took out her phone. She wondered who was calling her at this late hour. She looked to the side and looked at her seat, where it was written that she was the team leader controlling the challengers from the tower trial. Her name was Lee Ha Young. She remembered standing in front of people and without any doubt, this incident will lead to a revolutionary change. She understood that everyone at the top was really worried in earnest. She put her hand to her head and realized that even if the applicants were hiding their identity, she still never thought that it would be so difficult to recruit them. She opened her eyes and realized that she hadn't even managed to recruit 10 people, and those applicants were all low difficulty. This was not enough to satisfy the top management. She went to the window, which had a view of the city, and said that if you think about it, I have no idea what the man was doing. How strong her soul was, that it wasn't an exaggeration to say that he had single-handedly cleared the fourth floor, all of this was what she was saying about Han. She put her head to the window and realized that she should have proposed to him right away. She looked ahead after she received a message, she looked up and it was a message from Han Sun Yoon, who she crossed paths with on the fourth floor. He wrote that if she came back, she could not meet him. After that, we see 1,291,600,001 on the account. Han sat and looked at all this amount and realized that he had earned almost 130 million won and he still couldn't believe it was true. He sat in a cafe and realized that he was still feeling amazing, and he was wondering if he should have bought a house. Then the phone rang and Lee Ha Young walked into the cafe. She looked away, and Han called out to me. She walked over to the table, and Han noticed that she was running this way. He told her that you didn't have to write it down here. She sat down at the table and immediately called out to Hana. She said he hadn't even answered her message. Han was embarrassed by this and said that she had waited long enough for his answer. Hana apologized and said that he probably read it wrong as he was in a hurry. Ha pointed two fingers at him and said that he should buy her a cup of coffee and cheesecake. Han told her to order whatever she wanted. Afterward, coffee was brought to them. Ha asked if he was going to climb the upper floors of the Tower of Trials. Han said that he was going to continue his ascent in the Tower of Trials. He told her that he contacted her because he had a request for her. Ha was surprised by this, and Han said that he needed to join a guild and then he would have the opportunity to attack the dungeon during the short return from the trials. He started to say his terms. One was the right to refuse the order to appear in the guild. Two these are not meddling in his affairs related to the Tower of Trials. Three this is a permission to use the guild's dungeons at any time. Han asked if there was any guild that was ready to meet all of his conditions. He didn't look ahead and realized that there was a strange atmosphere here, he wondered if he had gone too far with his conditions. Ha called out to Hana and said that there were conditions that were absolutely impossible to fulfill. She said that from the guild's point of view, nothing would come of it. She took his hand, and Han said that he probably asked too much. Ha stood up, holding his hand, and told him to join their white guild. She said that she would do everything possible to make his conditions, which seemed impossible, become feasible. Then we see Han riding on the roof of the bus. She put her hands under her head and said that the raid in the dungeon before selling the right to occupy, plus joining the guild. Yesterday he put in an extreme productive day. He stared ahead, thinking. He understood that even if he had one odd task left to complete before joining the ranks, he had to clear a C-class dungeon alone, but he also had to demonstrate his abilities to make it easier for Ha to convince the higher-ups. He was thinking back to last night, and Ha said that the privilege of freely using the guild's dungeons wasn't available to everyone. Han looked ahead and realized that her words meant that not everyone could bathe in cream using the white guild dungeon. At the very least, it should be either a rising star or a hunter with high expectations. He confidently looked ahead and told Ha to prepare everything necessary for clearing the C-class dungeon. They shook hands and Ha said that she would make sure that Han would never regret his decision. After that, we will be transferred to the Yuejong Nakian Dong area, Chinbo Mountain. Han sat on the bus and viewed the huge building. After which, he got off the bus and pushed off from it. He moved forward at high speed. After that, we transfer everything to the portal where Ha was standing. 
She came over and said hello. She told me to come here to confirm her booking for the portal assault in an hour. She showed the man her ID card and he realized that she was the leader of the White Guild's Li Ha Young. He said that the appearance was confirmed and then showed her that there was still a lot of time left, so she should sit down under this awning for a while. She thanked him, then turned around to see Han just landing on the ground. Han landed, and with his sudden breaking, the wind almost blew away the people who were there. Ha watched all of this in silence while Han held things up and apologized for. Her. He said that he ran here too fast, so there was a shock wave. Ha along with the other people were shocked by this, and she couldn't believe that such a wind had picked up just because of her running. She said that Han came here rather early. She looked at Han and wondered what kind of person he was. Han came here so early because he just didn't have anything to do. Ha pointed to the portals and said that she had already passed all the verification procedures, and she told them to let her know when Han was ready to go there. Han said he could start the raid right now, but he said he didn't care when he started. Then Ha told him to start. After they entered the portal, they found themselves in a field. Han looked ahead and called out to Ha. He said that if she was in danger, then let him know right away. Ha said that she would be perfectly fine. Hanu was surprised and Ha told him that she was wearing an artifact that was given to her by the guild, it was in a rank empress necklace. Ha put his hand on his chest and said that this item that has a counting function and a weak invisibility effect was amazing. She looked at Hana and said that if she attracted the attention of the monsters, she would help them to some extent, so she would try to stay as far away from the battlefield as possible. Han looked at it and said it was wonderful. He said that now he could fight and not be afraid of anything. He went forward and activated the spiritual eye. He started to emit a purple aura and realized that it was a skill that he had inherited from the Lizard King. He felt that three spirit lines were approaching him from the field as well. His eyes changed color, and he realized that, and now he feels the presence of enemies invisible to his class. He realized that this was the spirit eye ability. After that, something started to move out of the field and monsters jumped out. Han jumped up or dodged the monsters that were chasing him. Ha hesitated and realized that it was the poison fisherman in the dungeon. From the class, she started yelling at Han to run away from them immediately, because this is a rule-breaking dungeon. Han took and easily defeated these monsters and the pair of whites to pieces. Ha stood there in complete shock, and she didn't understand what she had just seen with her own eyes. She realized that it was just crazy, and then she smiled and said that she knew she had made the right choice. Han swung his sword and delivered a crushing blow to the monster. He looked to the side and realized that the appearance of the Moa effect was very rare, after all, he had completely forgotten about its existence. After that, he noticed that the monster behind him was heading to attack him. Han dodged and grabbed the monster's tail. He took it and swung it at the wall. Han stood up from the portal and looked away. He started waving his hand in Ha's direction and said that he had more or less cleaned up the area and now she could safely come here. Ha looked at him in surprise and couldn't believe that he had reached the portal leading to the boss room in less than an hour, and even on his own. This was worthy of surprise. She said that the most amazing thing was that they were currently in a rule-breaking dungeon. Poison Angler, the monsters that Han had just fought were monsters that couldn't be taken lightly because one of the monsters recommended for group attacks. For the same rank C Hunters, was just the same Poison Angler that Han had just easily dealt with and was now heading towards the portal together with Ha. She knew that she still couldn't believe that he had dealt with such a monster so effortlessly, as if he were standing in front of a helpless baby. She looked at Hana who was entering the portal and realized that this was far from the limit of growth and what he would be able to achieve in the future was simply hard to imagine. The system message said that they used spirit absorption to permanently boost their stats. Strength increased by 4, agility increased by 3, stamina increased by 4, mana increased by 6, durability increased by 7, Han absorbed all these souls inside himself and headed forward. He realized that with this level, even the boss wouldn't pose any particular threat to him. He entered the portals and went to the boss room. He found himself in a place where there were rocks all around. Ha looked up and realized it was strange enough that they had come this far, but there was still no sign of the monster's presence. After that, a light beam began to appear from above, which was directed towards Ha. Han noticed this and realized that it was a very dangerous place. He looked at the monster that had just attacked them with its hands. He threw punches, and Han managed to catch Ha in his arms, and they returned to the attack. Ha looked at Hana in surprise and didn't even notice. The monster started to charge a huge blue sphere in its mouth and then it released a bullet that attacked Hana. Ha shouted that a huge dragon was coming from behind them, and Han took it and jumped up. He jumped on a rock and told her that he had moved her here without her consent and because the monster looked extremely dangerous, he hoped for her understanding. They stood and watched the monster. Ha said that she, on the contrary, is now in debt to Han and Han, looking at the monster that was looking for them said that he would leave her here to deal with him. Ha yelled at him to use her power, up skill on him. She said they could test his personal abilities later. Na Han just jumped up and headed down, he said he didn't want to. He said he would be back soon and started falling down. 
He fell right in front of the monitor and it noticed him. The monster glared at him furiously, and hand bent down and activated instant acceleration. The ground began to shake and an exclusive speed boots effect was applied, which instantly increased the speed. Han also activated the Wind Grace skill, and his entire speed was increased by 70%, and his current summation progress was 7 sevens. The monster started charging the sphere in your mouth and Han started walking towards it. He walked past the monsters who didn't notice anything and pulled out his blade. He used the three absolute skill and landed a few blows on the monster's bodies, which simply caused the monster to be cut into many pieces. Ha was watching all this from above, and the dungeon boss Blue Flame Fisherman was defeated, and in three hours, the dungeon was going to collapse. Ha was very happy at this moment and looked at Hana, who was standing next to the dismembered monster. She said that now she was completely confused as to which of them was the monster. Han looked at it all and realized that he had shredded it too much. After that, they exited the red portal and reappeared on the field. Ha said that she didn't expect Han, being a C-rank hunter, to clear the dungeon so quickly, she looked at Han and said that he had passed the tests and could now use the White Guild dungeon. She said that the guild wouldn't be stupid enough to miss out on a talent like Han. Han looked at her and said it was nice enough. Ha turned away and she said that she would move a little away from the main topic of conversation and said that when he was called to the Tower of Trials, the difficulty he initially chose didn't matter much. She said that even on low difficulty, those who performed well in passing the test will face increasingly difficult tasks as the number of tests increases, and vice versa, even on high difficulty, if the performance is lame, then the applicant may gradually slide to low difficulty. She looked to the side and said that based on this principle, the fact that Han had achieved such impressive growth could only mean one. Han's level of difficulty in climbing to the top of the challenge tower was a killer among the top 50 participants on the summing up board. Han just stood there and listened to her. Ha Da clasped her hands behind her back and said that as such, she very much hoped that Han would try to be a little more careful and she would like to accompany him for as long as possible or ripen his amazing roses firsthand. The author of this phrase was surprised and embarrassed. Afterward, Han sat on the roof of the building and ate an apple. The system message wrote that in five minutes it will be moved to the test tower. Han ate an apple, and it seemed to him that for the past three days, he really turned around like a squirrel in a wheel. He smiled and realized that it had boosted both his stats and his confidence. Time passed, and Han had to return to the Tower of Trials. Han jumped down and realized with a smile that she was returning to the Tower of Trials. He found himself in the waiting room and walked forward. He chose the 8th floor trials and was asked to choose the intersection point of the trials. Han was surprised and realized that if he thought about it that way, he had seen a mention of creating an intersection point. He chose the intersection of the two and realized that if he wanted to increase the effectiveness of necromancy, then he should go into battle. System message all of Han Sun Yun's challenger's personal trials were focused on fighting. After choosing the intersection point, treason was impossible. Han looked ahead and realized that he hadn't intended to change anything and now he didn't have to do anything else. The system message said that challenger Han possessed the qualifications of a trailblazer. Han was surprised by this. Now a private chat with the administrator should have opened. Currently, a search is underway for an administrator specializing in combat management. Han thought about the receptionist. The search was completed and he was told that a consultation was starting with Lord Steelblood, the manager of the battle crossing point. Han started to move, and he didn't even realize it. He found himself in a field where there was snow all around and weapons were stuck in the ground. Han raised his head and wondered where he was right now. The system message said that he had entered the world of Steelblood. Han looked ahead and saw even more weapons that were there. He used the eye of the true and his eye began to see more. The rest of blood is a space created especially for her by the administrator of the Lord of Blood, a place where they can drop in uninvited guests. Han looked ahead with a smile and realized that such a place also existed here. He looked forward in surprise and a system message wrote that administrator Lord Steelblood was unhappy that someone was making inquiries. He calculated this and realized that administrators can communicate their intentions through direct messages. He looked back and saw a sword that was levitating and burning with fire. The system message said that Administrator Lord Steelblood was telling him to stop suffering nonsense and follow the sword. He started to follow the sword that was heading forward. He followed him in silence and passed by trees and other swords. He looked ahead and saw a house in front of him. He opened the door and a system message said that Administrator Lord Steelblood was looking at him. Han looked forward in surprise and saw a man with long hair and red eyes sitting on a chair. Lord said he welcomed the trailblazer. She looked ahead and said that she was the administrator who was assigned to consult with him. The girl was sitting on a chair and Han, looking at her, realized that outwardly she looked like a foreign beauty. He looked at her and felt that she was emitting a red strong aura and was actually facing a creature that was being controlled in the Tower of Trials. The Lord walked over to it and began to examine the con. 
Han was surprised by this. He didn't know when she'd gotten here. He was staring at her, but he couldn't see it. The girl took the jars and said that she was very curious about what this monster looked like and she said that it was pretty good. Han looked at her and asked if she knew him. She said that of course she knew and the test on the fourth floor was quite impressive. She poured the drink into a glass and Han asked if she had been watching the whole ordeal. The girl said that she only knew about what happened from the data of the final report. She said that it was simply impossible to watch the challenge of applicants below the eighth floor. Han realized that she was an administrator but she couldn't watch the test. The receptionist picked up the glass and she said that from the look on her face she thought Han had misunderstood something. She said that administrators are not omnipotent beings like the same gods. She said they didn't run the tower at all. The girl drank the drink and Han said it was nothing. The girl said that administrators were more likely to be seen as creatures subordinate to the tower so Han shouldn't be too nervous about her presence. Han looked ahead silently and the girl said that as long as she obeyed the tower she couldn't harm him. The administrator looked at Hana and she said that all this chatter and this personal consultation was an advantage earned by him and if he had any questions then let him not hesitate and ask the administrator said. Han looked ahead and realized that he didn't feel any hostility so he asked her to explain what the consultation was all about. The girl was sitting near the window and there were a lot of things on the street. She said that as mentioned earlier, face-to-face -face consultation is an advantage that a trailblazer will get. She said that Han should not use questions to get comprehensive answers to questions through the administrator. Han looked over and said that in that case, on the fifth floor, he almost died at the hands of challengers from another dimension. He asked why exactly he came to him and it turns out a story-based implementation could be implemented from this world too. The receptionist smiled and said that there was no particular reason for this. She looked at Hana and said that this was due to the fact that when entering any floor in the other world, not only would she not be able to steal that floor's challenge reward, but she would also be unable to obtain more advantageous benefits. She said that applicants from other worlds come from places where they have been able to exist for decades, and they are well aware that the reward for harming an applicant from another world is incredibly high. The girl said that they also knew that the towers of this world would one day be merged with the towers of other worlds. Han asked her what she meant by that. The administrator said that starting from the 20th floor, the main focus was on the combined challenge, not the personal one, and then he would meet applicants from other worlds. He looked at all this and didn't understand why it was like trying to eliminate a competitor in advance that he would have to face one day. The receptionist put down the glass and asked him if she had satisfied his curiosity. Khan said that if you didn't take the last question into account, you could say that. He looked at her and asked about the challenge tower. He asked me what kind of structure it was. The receptionist paused, and she leaned her elbows on the table and said that was a question she would like to know the answer to herself. Han said that she was the administrator of the tower from, but she didn't know the answer to that question. The receptionist listened to all this in silence. She said that initially, the so-called administrators were the same applicants as Khan. She said that applicants who died after passing the 40th floor were eligible to be reborn as an administrator again. She said that she used to climb the tower to see the end, but she couldn't get to the top of the tower, although it would be more accurate to say that all the administrators just died before reaching the end. And so she became an administrator when she died on one of the high floors. Han squeezed his hand into a fist and realized that the girl wanted to tell him that the administrators were just former applicants who failed in their task. He looked down and said that he really hoped she knew something about the tower and could tell him about it. The girl looked at him, then she ran up to him and grabbed him by the neck. She held him up and glared at him angrily, telling him that the words about the top of the tower were not something that could be said so lightly and casually. Han looked at her in silence, and the girl said that Han was not particularly puzzled by this, she asked him if he was not afraid. Han said it was because she herself said it was a personal consultation and she was his wife, and he didn't feel any hostility from her. After that, the girl pushed him away, and Han was on the street. He looked at her with his weapon in hand and said that he wasn't going to let her hurt him so easily. The girl looked at all this in surprise, then she smiled and said that for how many years she lived here, she first saw the one who destroyed the administrator's residence. She looked at Hana and said that she was satisfied with his actions. The Khan who didn't understand looked at her, and the receptionist said that the Khan's challenger, she was offering him a contract of patronage. Han was shocked by the news. The system message said that the entrance to the waiting room on the 8th floor was completed. You're messing with your nose on your bed. He opened his eyes and got up from it. He opened an exclusive shop and his contractor became Lord Steelblood. He looked at it all and realized that he had indeed entered into a contract with the administrator. He remembered the receptionist and she told him that she couldn't miss out on applicants who were both talented and bold. The system message asked if Han wanted to sign the patronage agreement. The con agreed and the contract was concluded. The system message said that the contractor's exclusive stores will be opened, where special points will be available to him, 
and as a special advantage was provided by the contractor, all stats increased by one. The administrator looked at Han and said that it was fun and she told him see you soon. Han clicked on the power items and the list was Mind Purity, Steel Soul, Winter King. Han was surprised and realized that there was also a level of this category of store. He wondered if there was a difference between simple power and the unique power obtained on the 8th floor. Han realized that he needed to check the other pages first. The system message said that he didn't have enough rights to view the current list of forces and he can look in the list of forces in the waiting room on the 10th floor. Han realized that only these three powers were available to him at the moment. Purity of mind costs 1000 and in any situation, the Khan will be able to think rationally. Status and anomalies such as anger and confusion during combat are halved and combat immersion is increased. The steel soul cost 6,500 and the description was as follows. This is the soul that some lords were born with, which was said to have no blood or tears. Increases the proficiency of all weapons by 2.32 times and all newly learned combat skills start at 10% proficiency. King of Winter Table 800 and the description was as follows. This is a power that the rulers of the north often received. In cold conditions, C's stats would temporarily increase and Han wouldn't suffer from the cold. Han thought about it and realized that it was all somewhat ambiguous. He realized that it was probably better to save up a little and choose something else. After that, he immediately clicked on the system screen and bought the power of mind purity. He began to think and realized that the power that allowed him to think clearly in any situation, it was very cool. He started to play the situation off in his head and realized that it was better to raise his survival bar that way, which they didn't need to think about at all because there was a chance that he was going to run into an invasion floor right now. He stood in front of the portal and was asked if he was ready to start the test. Han began passing tests where the difficulty was high and the topic of this section was destruction. The condition for successful completion of the challenge was defeat the skeleton summoning lick. The conditions for failure of the test were death and the applicant's reward for successful breakthrough all characteristics received plus two. The penalty in case of failure was equal to death. Han entered the portal and looked down. He didn't understand what was going on here. He saw a lot of skeletons that were located below and did not understand why there were so many of them, and in the distance he could see a building. Looking at all the monsters, Song said out loud that it was probably an attempt to overwhelm the enemy with numbers. Standing on the cliff, right above those skeletons, he decided to launch his attack. He charged at them at full speed and then jumped away from the cliff and landed with great force so that a huge blue beam appeared above him and the skeletons scattered around. Then he got up and stood with his head lowered, but he was still glowing with a blue aura. The skeletons started attacking him, swinging their swords. They all started beating Sung up in a crowd, and he just stood there with his arms outstretched. There was smoke coming from him, and he just stood there and realized that they couldn't even break through his basic defense. So he started smashing them right and left, so that these skeletons were already scattered. He understood that these skeletons were so frail. For each skeleton, his skill increased by 0.08 hundredths of a percent, and so on all the time. He was very disappointed with such figures, saying that he did not like it at all. But he still had to deal with the enemies, so he took turns beating each skeleton, breaking it, and the skill also slowly increased. Song, who was standing in a fighting stance, said that it was useless to raise his skill during this test. Suddenly, while he was standing in the midst of a thousand skeletons, someone viciously shouted out to him who he was, and how he dared to commit outrages in his sanctuary in the first place. Song turned his head to see who was saying that. He looked ahead and assumed the voice was coming from there, and then he held up two fingers and began to summon the dead. The skeletons that he killed started to rise up and revive again, the notification said that he only had 30 souls. The revived skeletons began to pick up rocks and attack other skeletons, breaking everything in a row. Song looked at them in surprise, thinking that he hadn't realized before that the skeleton soldiers were also quite usable. Then he put his hand on his neck while the skeletons flew behind him and said that they should deal with these frail skeletons while he went to get the boss's head. Dream jumped into the sky as the skeletons watched in surprise. He activated the Wind Grace skill. His entire speed increased by 60% and he also used the exclusive Speed Boots effect, which increases his speed. Sleep ran through the skeletons' heads. Then, when they were over, he got down to the ground and ran on. Suddenly, he saw a huge fortress in the distance, which was where the boss was located. He looked ahead and confidently said that he needed to go there. Therefore, he immediately rushed to him. The skeleton boss, who was holding a book, noticed a strange new guest. It was a dream that reached him in the fortress in the blink of an eye. Song looked at him with a smile and he also said that he found him. The boss with red eyes said angrily that this person dared to cross the threshold of his sanctuary. So he opened the book and started shouting that he would make him pay the full price for this audacity. Huge orcs with fangs and sharp nails began to appear out of thin air. There were stitches on them, as if they were sewn together from pieces of flesh. 
Dream looked up in surprise, thinking that he could command orcs as well. The boss looked down on him, saying that he now realized whose sanctuary he dared to enter. Song, standing in front of these three monsters, says that he couldn't have summoned someone stronger. The boss was surprised by these words at first, so he asked again. Ah Song started taking out a dagger from his inventory, saying that just because he didn't have any stronger items in his arsenal, he would be very disappointed. The boss started pointing at him and viciously shouting that he was crazy, because these guards would be enough to tear him to shreds. The two huge orcs started running straight at Sun, and then he activates the instant acceleration skill, and in a split second he ran at the orcs. Song cut off the two of their heads and stood right in front of the boss. The boss turned to see where Song was already standing. Suddenly, Sleep cuts off both of his legs, causing him to fall on his back. Song smiles happily and holds a hand on his chest, thinking that the undead are still good at raising the skill level. The boss, sitting already without legs, thinks where did this monster come from. The Lick imagined him as a demon, with sharp fingers, evil eyes, and sharp fangs. Song started swinging his sword at him, telling him to finish, and the Lick covered himself with his hand. When he suddenly notices something, it was the boss's book, and he knew that if he looked at the situation in general, the Lick had freely summoned various monsters, and if so, he might be able to learn this skill from him. So Song watched with a malicious smile. Song threw his book directly at the Lick, which made him surprised. And then standing in front of him, he asked if he could summon those guardians, and the boss asked why he was asking him such a question. Song started to approach him, saying that if he couldn't, then they would end on a similar note. The Lick started to stop him, telling him that he could do anything. Song asked when he would finally be able to summon them, and the Lick screams in fright that a few minutes after the death of the guardians, he is able to summon them again. Dream, looking at the corpses of these orcs, asked the Lick that he was already able to summon them again. He said he could. At the same time, Song told him to start doing it already and the Lick asked why he should do it, they are not a hindrance for him. Dream came even closer to him, saying that he was already tired, so let him die. And the Lick, very frightened, started flipping through the book, shouting that he would immediately start summoning. The boss started summoning these orcs, so they ran at Sun, who just cut them into small pieces while standing next to the boss. The Lick then asked him if he was satisfied, and Song put the sword on his shoulder with a displeased look, saying that they were just getting started. He kicked him and told him to summon all the skeletons that weren't dead yet, and that he would put all his strength into these guards, and the Lick covered his face with his hand and said that he would do anything. Dream cut these orcs open a very large number of times as soon as they appeared, and the Lick was shouting in frustration about how long he should be doing this. Dream slashed at the orc again, his face completely blank, and then he smiled maliciously, and his eyes were purple in color, and he said that the Lick would call them until he told them to stop. Another orc pushes at Sun, but he just points a finger at him with a serious expression on his face and immediately stops him, then jumps on his hand and runs along it. After that, he simply cuts off his head, increasing his skill. Then the second orc falls to the ground, leaving no head. Sun receives a notification that his mastery of the unique necromancy characteristic has reached 100%, and the rank of this unique characteristic is increased by one level. Light started to appear from his chest, and there was a blue aura around him. Song thought with a big smile on his face that necromancy now has a C rank. The Lick called him names, and the dream turned around after saying that. The Lick sat with his hands lowered and said that he would even make the devil tremble, he would curse him even after death. The Lick was already sitting up with his eyes half closed, and a strange smoke was coming out from under his mask. And in general, the mask itself was covered with cracks. Sleep began to approach him, thinking that the fact that he was getting more and more cracks with each summoning signaled his imminent demise. Song swung his sword, saying that he was very sorry, because he so wanted to use it a little longer. Then he cut off the Lick's head, and while the Lick's head was flying, he said that getting to know him was the most disgusting thing that had ever happened to him in his life. He was given an achievement, a person who surpassed the devil. His agility increased by one point, and he was also able to absorb the Lick's spirit. For killing him, his skill is increased by 17%. Dream absorbed the blood mist from the lick, and then the notification again said that he had broken through the 8th floor, he had received 30,000 points, as well as 700 SP. And 300 SP is an additional reward. A portal appeared in front of him, which would take him to the waiting room. As soon as he entered the room, a notification said that the system expansion had begun, and now administrators will be able to monitor the tests. And the restrictions on answering questions have been lifted. They will also now be able to acquire C-rank skills in the shop. The dream decides to look at its status window. He poked his finger at these windows. But the second window was a window with a unique characteristic. Song read it all with a smile on his face, saying that absorbing the skill itself is cheating, so now you don't have to download the skill skill from scratch. And the most important thing is that the probability of absorbing the skill has now opened up. It said that when absorbing the spirit of the deceased, 
there was a 20% chance that one of the skills imprinted in the soul would be acquired. Song waved away the window with his hand and said that the test of the 8th floor ended quite gently, but there is no guarantee that the test of the 9th floor will be the same. He clearly needed to carefully prepare for the next challenge on the 9th floor. He raised the sword in front of him and looked at it, saying that he thought the sword could still be used, but the main problem was the shield and skills. Song started reading the skill window from his dagger and thought that since he had maxed out the skill, he had come to the point where he needed a replacement sword skill. Then, he decided to open a skill shop and started looking at the skill catalog. Song was still flipping through the catalog and his face showed displeasure because his hopes were not fulfilled, there is nothing worthwhile there. So he looked at it with a serious look and said that since there was no skill to buy, he would have to create one. Therefore, he immediately bought a basic swordsmanship skill, which he gave 25,000 points for. The skill window said that it increases the ability of swords. Song moved the three windows around him, thinking that if he was going to increase the rank of the hunter's dagger with skill synthesis, then he should be able to predict the combination compatibility as best as possible. Among the current skills he has, the most compatible is basic swordsmanship. He chose two skills, hunter's dagger and basic swordsmanship. It was a level lower than the hunter's dagger. The notification says that the ranks of materials for synthesis do not match each other, so synthesis will be centralized around the hunter's dagger skill. At this point, there is a 75% chance that a higher level skill will be synthesized. He was asked if he wanted to continue the synthesis. Song tapped the consent button with his finger. These two skills merged into one, which glowed very brightly, and the notification said that the synthesis was successful, so a new skill was created. It shone so strongly that the dream was flooded with light. The skill was called Demon Slayer. Moreover, it turned out to be a level higher than his skill was previously. This skill allowed him to deal undead damage twice as fast. Song looked at this skill with a spark in his eyes and thought about how this skill adds attack speed when fighting non-human creatures. It seems that this skill is just created for hunting monsters. He was smiling, because his expectations were met, the ability to synthesize skills is very useful. He picked up the three skill cards in his hands, wondering if he should try synthesizing the remaining skills. He was drenched in sweat and looked strange, but he was tapping the screen to synthesize them. Then he was already smiling and still throwing skills for synthesis, saying that he had checked the compatibility of skills and the probability of synthesizing. It combined the skills of accelerated regeneration, resistance to the laws of nature, iron blood regeneration, and pain tolerance. After he agreed, he was once again covered in a bright golden light. And he was lucky, so a new skill was created, with the name, Ashen Blood. Dream was very surprised by this skill. He looked at it and thought that the triple acceleration of regeneration is already cheating in itself, but the skill also blocks pain. He took out his sword, thinking that the waiting room was equipped with healing, so he wouldn't be able to test this skill properly. However, a hundred points isn't a burden to him right now. The notification said that the waiting room's regeneration effect was removed, and 50 points were deducted from his account. Fatigue will build up and he will not recover from physical damage. He held out his hand and swung his sword, thinking that since the spirits were all consumed, the shield wouldn't activate at all, and he decided to start his check. So he swung his sword, and then he started screaming in pain. His hand flew to the side, drenching everything in blood. Then he chopped off his own hand twice more to test it. But it grew back instantly, glowing green, and he looked at it with surprise. He looked down at his hand, and there was a sparkle in his eyes, and he knew that this was an amazing ability, because even when he was outside the waiting room, it was basically like he was under eternal healing. He then adjusted his sleeve as he continued to ponder that in addition to this level of regeneration, he also had a spiritual shield. But honestly, he doesn't need that tin called a shield anymore. He stood in the middle of the room and said that he had to use it until it broke, because he was very attached to it. Then Sun decides to go to the community, flipping through the window, he said that there seems to be nothing there that deserves his attention. A portal opened in front of him and he started to enter it, saying that the time spent in the waiting room was coming to an end, so there was no point in dragging your feet. You said that he entered the ninth floor, and the topic of this test is wrestling. They gave him a full day's time. Suddenly, the dream notices a notification with a red exclamation mark in front of it, which means that something bad has happened. It said that Han Sung Yoon's challenge on the ninth floor was currently unsafe. It is confirmed that there was a successful introduction of the challenger from the world of Muram. He stole the goal of the challenge. Song saw a man standing on a mountain of corpses in a white robe. Song was wary, realizing that this was clearly a contender from another system. The man stood and looked at Sung, saying that he finally came. He closed his eyes and tilted his head, introducing himself as the commander of the Muram Alliance, Lee Sung Hak and the notification said that the goal of the test has changed, because now Sanu will need to kill the challenger from the world of Muram. The man was white-haired and elderly, but he still had his head bowed. Song looked at him very displeased, and the old man asked him his name. 
They were in some mountains, and Song asked him why he was suddenly asking his name. Sun replied that he had already revealed his name and position. Song was getting more and more angry, saying that he didn't invade his floor with good intentions, so what's the point of introducing himself? The old man looked at him and said that there was some etiquette between swordsmen, but he thinks Sung's thoughts are clearly limited. The wind was blowing Sun's hair, and there was some kind of smoke floating around. And he looked at him with a serious look, thinking that he didn't have any words at all. He didn't understand how it was that among the challengers from other systems, there wasn't a single normal warrior. The old man took out his sword and said that it should be as he wished, since he wanted to hide his name, it couldn't be helped. The old man immediately launched an attack on Song. Sun started using magic on his sword, so there was a golden trail behind the blade. And while it was flying at Sun, dozens of golden swords were also flying at him. Dream activated the Wind Grace ability, so his entire speed is increased by 30%. Song was looking at these swords as he prepared to make his move, so with his fast speed, he was able to fend off every sword flying at him. Then he jumped away from the old man, which made him wary. He pushed the sword aside, saying that there was such an experienced warrior in this dimension. Song, who was looking at him, heard an apology from him, because the old man looked down on him, but now he changed his mind. Dream exhaled and told him to stop being a hypocrite. The old man was very surprised to hear this. Standing opposite each other with their swords in their hands, Song added that he had come to kill him and steal his reward, and since he had come there with such an intention, then why was he being so polite? Dream was looking at him with very angry red eyes. The old man opened his eyes, they were purple in color, and he replied that it was probably because they were both from different worlds, so they couldn't understand each other. Then he raised his sword up, so that the entire area shone with a bright yellow light, and purple smoke began to appear below it. He raised his bright sword while everything was in smoke and wished him a good death, calling him a swordsman whose name he didn't know. Dream covered his hands against the smoke, and the notification said that due to this old man's unique characteristic, he was blinded for five seconds. Sung's eyes were blurry, and he was standing completely in the void, disoriented and not knowing what to do, because he couldn't see anything at all. He has activated his magic resistance skill, so the duration of vision loss has been reduced to two and a half seconds. Song held out his sword, saying that it was great. Ah Sung was already right behind Sung until Sung couldn't figure out where he was running. He also activated the Spirit Eye skill, and now recognizes attacks in the invisible range. His eyes shone with a purple light, but then that old man's sword was flying at his back. Song was able to dodge that sword, but it still grazed his neck a little, so a wound appeared on him. He received the achievement, insight, as well as his dexterity increased by two points. He decided to attack blindly, just hitting anywhere. But then the blindness effect passed, and the old man jumped away from him, because he was swinging his sword. The old man took up a fighting stance, moving his sword hand away. Song activated his regeneration skill, realizing that his throat had almost been cut just now. But because of the skill, the wound instantly healed. The old man looked at him and asked how he was able to calculate the trajectory of his sword. But Song didn't respond to him, so he just activated the Wind Grace skill, increasing his speed by 50%. He took up a lunge stance, thrusting his sword forward. Then, with lightning speed, he made a dash, leaving a blue trail behind his eyes. The old man had already noticed this, so he was also preparing to take the hit. And I was able to successfully block his strike, so that the entire ground around me was already cracked. They struck their swords point to point, but then Song decided to throw a roundhouse kick. He almost reached the old man, but the old man was able to jump away, and then he swung his sword in an attempt to chop off the old man's leg. Song dodged, also swinging his sword in his direction, but the old man stopped his sword strike with his hand. Ah Song, in turn, blocked the sword strike with his foot, and they were both standing in a very strange position, holding each other. The old man said he was using some strange techniques. Song looked at him in surprise, thinking that he was a little puzzled, because even with his incredible height, their stats were basically on the same level. They leaped up from the ground, so that it all began to crumble from their jumps. Sun opened his eyes while flying and said that from now on, he would be very serious. Then, he raised his sword up again, using the ability to lose sight of the enemies. The dream went blind again for five seconds. He was also in the air, covered in a fog of blindness, but immediately used the magic resistance skill, so he reduced the duration of this blindness, and then used the spiritual eye skill. He felt not just one blow coming at him, but four at once. He took a fighting stance, and those swords began to spin. Song was very surprised, because the speed of his attacks had greatly increased. Song was dodging all the blows, but he noticed that another attack was coming at him. Therefore, he immediately used a steel shield that covers him with a protective layer that absorbs about 10% of all physical damage. Song placed his sword under this attack, but then his arm was simply cut off, causing him to immediately activate pain resistance. 
He looked at his hand and was angry, realizing that even the steel defense skill wasn't enough to block his punch. At this point, his blindness ends, and he notices that the old man is running at him with another attack, which he dodges, and then he jumps up with one foot and turns around, about to kick a flying rock. And after the U-turn, it hits him with all its might, so that he starts to crumble, but flies straight at the old man. Sun notices this, and hits the ground with his sword. Song jumps up and reaches with his teeth for his hand, which has apparently just been cut off. The old man notices that he is not there, but that he is flying right in the air behind him. The old man turns around to see where he is, and Song holds his hand in his teeth while it recovers completely. The old man opened his eyes a crack and said, as for his recent techniques, he thought that Song was a pretty good martial artist, but all his techniques were just borrowed from somewhere. Ah Song clenched his fist and said that the unique characteristic that the old man uses is also an ability, received from the tower. Then, he activated the Wind Grace skill again, so its speed is now increased by 70%. Dream shone with a blue aura and clenched his fist, saying that he criticizes others, but does not notice any sins behind him. Sun pointed his sword at him, saying that he was using his tricks again, because as a swordsman, relying on borrowed abilities was extremely unprofitable in battle. But then the dream is behind him, ready to attack. The old man only has time to open his eyes and notice him, but then he was able to draw his sword, blocking Sun's blow. He didn't understand how it had happened. Song looked at him with an evil look and asked, then how about we die from the borrowed ability? The old man, blocking the blow, was silent, but it was obvious from him that it was hard for him to fight Sun. As he stood in the middle of the corpses, he began to remember everything, because he had performed a floor implementation dozens of times so far. His sword was dripping with blood, and he said that he used it to cut down opponents from different worlds. In particular, the people of the world called Earth were weak in terms of abilities in all respects. Everything is so deplorable that this place is called a jar of honey. The sword is right next to the old man's head, and he said that the challengers from Earth couldn't even touch a hair on his head, and besides, when using the unique sword-like characteristic that obscures the opponent's view, a single sword in his hand was enough to deal with every single one of them. And this time, he was sure that history would repeat itself. But then, Dream stabbed his dagger right at the old man's head, making him so scared. He was able to dodge the kick, but it still grazed him a little. The old man started to bleed, and his eyes were very displeased. There were traces of their fight in the air, they were fighting so hard that the whole air was really shaking. Dream was also covered in blood, but thanks to his skills, he was healing his wounds quickly. The old man, on the other hand, looked exhausted. He also didn't have a regeneration skill like Sun, so he was covered in cuts. Sung received notifications that Administrator White Crane Sword admired the young challenger, and Administrator Monster of the North predicted his imminent defeat. Two other administrators were delighted with the young applicant. The old man saw all this and was devastated, so he didn't say anything. But then he made a face so angry that words couldn't describe it. He started activating his skills, so now his attack speed is doubled, lightning energy is overflowing the sword, and the cutting power of the sword is doubled for the next attack, and he also increased his movement speed by almost three times for one minute. The old man was serious, and his sword felt like it was on fire. Song started laughing at him, saying that just a moment ago, he had used any techniques himself. After Sun's words, the old man was hit with a one-story implementation penalty, so all of his stats are reduced by 8 points, and he can't use any of his skills. Sun was very angry when he saw the notification. Now, his two skills were forcibly deactivated. But then, the cooldown time for the sword's unique stat was over, so he just used it again. A purple mist appeared around Sun, causing him to go blind again. He was thinking that he was getting used to this old man's template attacks. He activated the spiritual eye. Sung was getting mad with anger, so he charged at him, yelling that he would gut his guts out. His strongest punch went straight at Blind Sun from above, who wasn't expecting this. But Dream activated the three absolute skill, so his three attacks are boosted by the skills effect. And he was waiting for an attack from the old man, and he was also very angry that a blue aura was coming out of his eyes. Dream instantly attacked that huge beam. The blindness began to fade, and Sleep stood with his back to his enemy. Sleep was very tired but the old man just stood there. Song then dropped his sword on the floor and walked forward. He was trembling all over and a blue cut could be seen in the middle of his body. The old man was scared and very angry, he didn't understand how this could have happened. While Song was on his knees, all tired, a large amount of blood spilled out from the old man, and he just fell to the ground, being split in two. Song looked ahead with a smile on his face, and the notification said that he had broken through the ninth floor of the challenge tower. Dream absorbed the blood mist from that old man, and the notification said that he had absorbed Lee Sung Hak's spirit, and his skill was raised by 27%. He looked sideways and was surprised that it was as much as 27%. 
The notification said that the difficulty level and reward are not the same, so the reward is completely revised. Song remembered that something similar had happened before, and he wondered what kind of reward he would get this time. Finally, the revision was completed and as the first reward, he was given a 6 cent skill, a rank higher than the reward before. He also received 30,000 points and a thousand ko. Song stared at the window in front of him and was surprised by his sixth scent, realizing that the rank of this skill was much higher than the beast instinct skill that was originally in the reward. He decided to go back, entering the portal and saying that he would look at the details in the waiting room. Right inside the portal, a lot of notifications popped up, saying that a lot of admins were excited about Sun's battle. He was surprised at first, and then remembered. After all, there were two notifications in front of him on the 8th floor that warned him that the administrators would now be able to observe the tests. Then he just smiled, thinking that somehow, many of the administrators were still delighted with his fight, and he now feels slightly satisfied that he has received some recognition. Then he gets two more notifications saying that the Lord of Steelblood disapproves of excessive interest in the contactor, and then she tells Xiang not to become obsessed with the increased attention. He was then informed that the White Crane Sword Administrator wanted to add power to the Song exclusive store, whether he was willing to accept the offer. The Dream at first did not understand what it is at all. He looked at it with great surprise, so he asked what it meant, was it that the Administrator was just giving him power? He is answered in a notice that the Lord of Steelblood says in a displeased tone that he can just accept the Force. He said that just accept it and that's all. She added that there are times when an applicant is sponsored by a force to gain the applicant's favor. Song thought about this offer, which is a rare favor for an applicant who has already signed a contract. So he asked if there might be situations where they would have to face each other. Dream looked at the message, which said that there would be a lot of such situations in the future. There was still smoke in these rocks, and the Lord of Steelblood said that the power provided would be so excellent that he would feel somewhat burdened. Song thought that the power wasn't that good, but it was also being used to buy his favor. It turns out that he is given this power because something is expected of him. He realized that there was no need to doubt, so he began to point at the window, saying that he would gratefully accept his gift. The notification said that the power of a Kai Swordmaster was now added to his shop, and the administrator of the White Crane Sword, with a smile on his lips, asks him not to forget about this kindness. Dream told him that he would be happy to use his gift. Sleep went into the waiting room, and then immediately the system expansion started. It now has access to shared areas. Dream saw this while standing in the middle of the room and was surprised when he read that he could walk in common areas. He stood there, feeling a little shy, because he was wondering if the administrators might be watching him here, too. So he asked out loud that maybe they were still looking at him. There was complete silence, and sleep exhaled calmly. He decided to open an exclusive shop. There were three abilities on the first page, Steel Soul, Winter King, and Sword Kai Master. Song's eyes widened in surprise. He pressed his finger on the Sword Master's Power Kai. In this window, it was written that now he can put mana into his sword, charging it with this. Song was very surprised by this power and thought about how he could now infuse mana into the weapon and use Sword Kai. He said that he was told that the power is not very good, but it looks very good. And then he noticed that he could now go to the second page of the store. And there were also three skills, such as Bone Reconstruction, Steel Blood Sword, and Death Hand. Dream decided to look at all three windows, and in the reconstruction of the bone, it was written that now all his stats will increase by two, and using the steel blood sword, he can summon this sword, which consists of mana, but use it once. The hand of death increased the effectiveness of necromancy and black magic by half. Dream, looking at all this, understood that these are very strong abilities. But then he looked at his account, which had 2,000 coins on it. And he realized that at the moment he only had a few coins in his pocket, and the power that he could buy now was bone reconstruction. He imagined this reconstruction of the bone as being covered with some kind of yellow film. But he wanted to take the power of the Sword Master Kai for himself. His entire sword would then glow with a blue aura. Dream looked very thoughtful, thinking that he should save up a little, or buy a bone reconstruction. Song waved his hand, thinking that the old man Lee Sung Hak that he had just met on the ninth floor was also a crazy monster. Song then pointed out the window with a surprised face, deciding that in order to avoid dying at the hands of such monsters, he first needed to buy more strength. After pressing it, one and a half thousand points were deducted from his account, and in return, he was given the power of a sword master Kai. His sword began to shine violently, blowing off Sun's hair and clothes like the wind was blowing. He started swinging his sword, saying that the three absolute skill also uses mana, but the feeling is completely different. He imagined it as a rock with water flowing out from under it, thinking that if one called the mana flowing in the sword instantly like a wave, it was a triple absolute skill. But perhaps the power of a swordmaster's kai should be compared to the flow of water flowing through a sword, like a big river. The notifications told Sung that after a minute, 
his mana consumption increased by 2%, after 2 minutes, his consumption increased by 4%, and after 3 minutes, his consumption increased by 6%. Song looked at his sword and thought about how it increased its mana consumption by 2% every minute. He estimated that in about 50 minutes, the mana consumption would increase by 100%. At that moment, the dream deactivated its power, so the aura began to evaporate. He understood that he had to distribute his mana well when using this power. As he pointed at the window, he remembered that the reward for the ninth floor was a sixth sense. He started looking at the sixth sense skill window, and it said that his instincts were being sharpened to the point that they were becoming a sixth sense that could be used to make complex deductions. Song was surprised to read this and wondered if his senses would improve now. He started to rub his chin, saying that he could now draw conclusions based on his instincts, and it seemed like a pretty useful skill. After he dealt with all this, he went to the community to find out about the shared zone. In the chat, everyone wrote that there are too many foreigners there, and they are generally all surprised by this. Song flipped through the chat with his fingers, realizing that there were a lot of comments about the common areas that were added on the 10th floor. Then he notices something. It was a message from a top-level swordsman, who said that in the common area, a foreigner asked him if he would like to exchange power with his administrator. The dream was surprised, because now it turns out that you can also exchange forces. He continued flipping through the pages, saying that now there was an opportunity to personally see a lot of applicants and also exchange forces. He was very happy about it, so he wondered if he should visit this place himself. The notification said that it is included in the general area. It was a nice place where there was no bloodshed or anything. There was a park and mills, and also a portal in the middle. When a guy and a girl showed up, the guy happily looked ahead and thought about how he even used the ticket with questions to learn as much as possible about this place so now he's going to get the most out of it before going back. He's walking through the woods, waving his hand forward, and there are a few guys sitting in the bushes. The three of them recognized him as the strongest hunter from Korea. They've seen his profile. One of them, with a villain's smile, said that he was a strong hunter and he was constantly worried that his behavior left much to be desired. He tilted his head and said viciously that you can kill outside the common area. This guy was still walking forward and then received three notifications saying that he was weak and his body was paralyzed. He just fell to his knees, not understanding what was going on. He was shaking all over and couldn't even raise his hand, so he was angry. He heard a nasty laugh and turned to see who it was. These three bandits were standing in front of him, and this guy asked them to stop. Their leader began to lick his dagger, saying that he is one of the strongest hunters and does not understand what is happening now. The guy is very unhappy. He understood that even though they are not on trial, but even here they are engaged in robbery. The bandit leader raised his sword in front of him, and suddenly someone told them to stop. It was the same girl who was walking with the guy, she shouted that she would write in the chat about their atrocities. The head looked at her in frustration, then put away his sword in agreement. But then he raised his head and said in a nasty voice that he would think if she undressed. Putting his sword on his shoulder, he said that if she threw off her things, he would probably let them live. The girl was very embarrassed and did not intend to do this. The head started playing with his fingers, saying that he could help her and then the dream just passed them by. Suddenly, the head noticed him and was surprised, and the dream just passed by, not even paying attention. The head was confused, not understanding who was going there at all. Someone shouted at his back to turn around. Song turned his head with a displeased look, then took off his hood and asked what he had said to him. The head still stood with the katana on his shoulder and confirmed that it was his. Then they all started laughing nastily, asking him if he was Korean too, and these bandits began to throw their effects on him in order to kill him. Red effects flew at Sun, and he said that he wanted to quietly pass by. But then, he just used his magic resistance skill. Notifications said that all negative effects were removed. A green aura appeared around Sun. The bandits were terrified that he was able to remove their effects. Song started to pull out a sword from his inventory, then took up a stance to prepare for battle. And he said that he didn't start at first. Song activated the instant acceleration skill and charged towards those bandits, charging his dagger with mana. The three of them were in shock, even starting to fall backwards. He killed two of them in the blink of an eye by slashing their necks, and the third activated an ice shield to defend himself. Two kids are screaming in pain because they've just been killed. Song started swinging his fist to break that ice shield. Running up to it, he hit it with all his strength. The guy who was attacked and the girl were standing with their mouths open, and the head of the bandits, sitting behind the shield, was very scared and a dream appeared in front of him, shattering his entire shield with a single blow. The bandit began to stop him with his hand, asking him to stop, admitting his guilt and asking him to show mercy for once. But the dream just cut open his neck, which is spurting blood. There was a bloody mist everywhere, which sleep simply absorbed, as a result of which, his skill increased by 6.5%.
there were three corpses lying on the road and Sung walked over to those two guys. The girl awkwardly scratched her hand and apologized to Sung because she should have helped him, but the battle ended faster than she thought. Song told her that everything was fine so she didn't have to worry, but just go on her way. She bowed and thanked him, and the guy who was paralyzed started to get up. He looked at Sung and turned to him, asking that he was not a ranker by any chance, and Sung looked at him and replied that to some extent he could be called such. In his mind, he was always ranked in the top 10 in the final rankings. This guy beamed with joy and thanked him, saying that it was a great honor to meet him because it was thanks to Sung that he survived. Dream was looking at him, and in his head, he thought that they were trying to kill him so to get rid of the problem that had fallen on him. He just helped him along the way, but he just said that there was nothing wrong with it, so now they can go about their business. He turned away from him and walked into the distance, saying goodbye to them, and the guy asked him to wait because he wanted to say something. Song turned to him, asking him what he needed. He asked for the corpses of those applicants to be left to him. Song looked at him in great surprise and asked why he needed these corpses. And the guy replied with a smile that if he gave him these corpses, as well as for saving his life, he would repay by giving him strength. Song, hearing these words, was overjoyed, so he handed over the corpses. The guy started using his unique gluttony ability so that a mouth appeared in his hand, which began to absorb everything around it. The corpses of these three bandits also flew in. He straightened his hair, saying that it turned out well, and Song looked at him in surprise and thought about what kind of strength he had. The guy started poking his finger in the air and said that since he promised to give him power, he would do it. A notice appeared in front of Sung that said that he had accepted the power of the gourmet administrator. The power of steel wings was added to the exclusive shop, and he looked at it with a smile, thinking that he didn't expect to get another power. The guy started explaining to Sanu how his power works, imagining that purple wings appear behind his back and said that this is a power that allows you to create wings on your back with the ability to levitate, and if he buys this power, he can immediately use it. Song smiled as he thanked the guy, thinking that as soon as he entered the waiting room, he would immediately try out this power in action. Notifications began to appear in front of Sun, where administrators argued with each other, saying that no one should bother his applicant and someone just watched the fight of these four bandits with interest. Song looked at it all and was a little confused, not understanding what kind of commotion they were making. Then he closed his eyes, peering, and kept thinking that seeing how far the competition between administrators was going. So it was safe to say that they clearly wanted something from the applicants, but Song decided that he would just get to the bottom of it step by step. After a while, Song decided to go together with that guy in the forest, and then the kid started a dialogue, saying that the common area is divided into an arena, an auction zone and a game zone, and besides these well-known facts, he can share much more interesting information. Dream then listened to his words, and he said that the worlds of other dimensions that have been revealed so far in the process of floor implementation are Ares, Durham, and Kalian, so it turns out that they can only encounter these three dimensions when it comes to floor implementation. Two knights perform the rite of passage, as challengers from the world of Ares attach great importance to chivalry. The warrior is standing with a sword, while wearing clothes similar to the appearance of a Japanese. This is a challenger from the world of Murim, he is similar to Ares, but more aggressive. Song heard this and looked around, guessing that the Black Knight was from the Ares world and Lee Sung Hayek was from Murim. And then the kid said that he had heard that Kalian was a world of races like elves, fairies, and beastmen. Song tilted his head and said that this guy is quite knowledgeable, and the latter smiled at him and said that he had found out everything in advance using the right to ask questions. And so, after a while they came to the common area, so the guy standing at the entrance said that here they are and finally got. And then he handed Sung a piece of paper, it was his business card. Song took it and read what it said, so he asked him a question, which means that he is the head of the challenger control team from the Hunter Association. And the guy told him that if he had any questions, he could contact him at any time. After going a little further, the notification said that they had entered the common area, so all abnormal statuses are removed, and fights between applicants become impossible. The guy is very happy about this place. And then he would stand there and rub his hands together, looking at Sun, and say that now he needed to slowly move towards the auction area. Song replied that he also had a place where he should definitely visit. The guy leaned over to look at Sung and asked him where he intended to go. Song, with a confident look ahead, replied that he wanted to go to the arena. Song was standing in the middle of the arena, between the people who were sitting on chairs and looking at the screens. Three guys looked at the arena itself and were dissatisfied, one even held his head, the three of them shouted dissatisfied exclamations. Dream turned his head to look at them, thinking that this was indeed an arena, more like a gambling den. Notifications say that three administrators are talking about how one of them is happy, 
and another that the arena seems to be the same everywhere, and the third was excited because of the heat that has settled in the arena. Song looked at the chairs that were separated by partitions, he realized that he just needed to sit down at one of the computers. Song walked over and sat down on a chair, folding his arms. Then notifications appeared in front of him, which surprised him. It was written on them that the arena system was activated and he was offered to place a bet, or else a duel. He clicked on the help window. Three notifications told him about the rules in the arena, that he can make a bet, which he can double or lose. Dream read them with interest, thinking that it turns out that the people whose conversation he heard also made a bet, but they lost. Then, five more notifications explained that he could participate in a duel by putting his item, skill, or strength on the line. Song was thinking that it turns out that if the status of the duel is confirmed, then the participants of the duel will automatically move to the Colosseum, in other words, that the reward for the duel is the core of the arena. He thought of these words as items, skills, or power. Song poked his finger at the screen, wondering who to choose for the duel, and in general, whether there would be a reward that he would like. The four kids were gaping in surprise, asking each other if there wasn't a Hellfire witch named Katrin. She was from America, and some people even saw her for the first time. A girl with purple hair was sitting in front of them, and she was also poking at the window of the arena. She was a little annoyed because no one was sending her a request for a duel and all because she had too many wins to her credit. She was looking at her stats window and it was clear that she had never lost in 17 duels. She wished that those stats didn't exist at all so that she could challenge more often. The receptionist started laughing at this and Catherine just tapped her fingers on the screen saying that there were those who were afraid to send her a call. Then she stood up thinking of walking out of there and saying that she should stop wasting her time and leave the arena. But then she noticed something. She received a request for a duel from Han Sung Yoon. He had put his Demon Slayer skill on the line. She read his name and stats, and then realized that he had come to the arena and immediately selected it. She started to smile, and her eyes lit up. The duel was confirmed, and they were moved to the Colosseum. They were standing in the middle of the arena, facing each other. She looked at him with a smile and said that she really liked his fighting spirit, but before choosing an opponent, you should first observe the opponent. Song looked at her with a serious look and said nothing. The duel began, and the girl was already on fire. She looked at him with a haughty look and told him to let him think it was a good experience for him. She activated the power of birth of fire, so raising her hand over her head, a huge fireball began to appear there. This kind of magic caused the wind to blow everywhere, so that Sun's hair was blown out by the current of air. Katrin waved her hand, causing that huge fireball to fly towards Sun. Dream dodges this ball. He started to run away from this magic, and then this ball came very close to his face. Katrin was very confident, so with a smile on her face, she said that he was finished. Song activated the Sword Master's Kai skill, so he made a cut right in the middle of that huge ball. The fireball split into two, and the Dream continued to strike. Song stood in a fighting stance, holding his sword in the air. The girl opened her eyes wide in surprise and stood with her mouth hanging open. In behind Sun was the smoke from that fireball. She looks at him in disbelief, and he tells her that now he will give her a good experience. Song pointed his sword at her with a big smile on his face. We are transported to some bamboo forest, and then we see a Japanese-style mansion. A girl drinks hot tea. She is sitting on the floor, and in front of her is a huge water ball into which she is looking. She was watching Han Sung Yoon, who was cutting through the fireball at that moment. The girl looked into the water ball and happily said that she didn't expect that the dream would have already mastered the released Kai energy. She patted the chick that was sitting on her shoulder and said that she made a great move when she sponsored such a great power, and in the future, he would need to gain the favor of this applicant faster than the other administrators. She got up and went out into the courtyard, where the sun was shining brightly, and she looked up at the sky and thought that maybe sleep could fulfill her long-held wish that she couldn't fulfill. We returned to Sung, who was looking ahead with a serious look. He was looking at the three flying fireballs, right at him. Then, he activated the instant acceleration skill, so he just jumped very high away from those balls. They all flew after Sun, but he started to cut the balls one by one. While Dream was breaking one of the balloons, another one flew at his back. It was able to fry his cloak while flying past him. Dream saw this and was very displeased, so he immediately landed on the ground, with his cloak burnt out. He looked at his back and thought that he would be sorry to lose the exclusive effect of the cloak due to not being able to use the Wind Grace skill. Then Catherine didn't waste any time, so she started creating these balls one by one, right above her head. She was smiling very hard and asking him how long he could last. The three administrators watched this battle with great interest. Catherine threw more fireballs at Sun. Dream continued to cut them down, but it had already been three minutes since their battle, so the mana consumption had increased to 6%. Then, Dream was still fighting off her attacks, and another minute had passed since then, so the mana absorption rate was now 8%.
Song looked ahead with a serious gaze and knew that if the battle dragged on, he would be at a disadvantage. At this moment, a blood mist appeared in his chest as he absorbed the spirit of the challenger Lee Sun Hack, thereby increasing his stats. He was very lucky, because he also absorbed one of his skills, so he got a lightning sword Kai. Song looked sideways in great surprise, wondering if it allowed him to perform a cleaving strike, and whether it even meant that he could launch Kai energy over long distances. Katrin began to summon another orb in her palm, telling him that he was thinking about having time to get distracted by other things. There were sparks of fire above Sun's head, and then he raised his head and saw that there were huge fiery spears flying straight at him. They fell instantly, so Song decided to just run away from them. The two spears were just inches from his head, but Song had already reacted to them, so he cut one of the spears and grabbed the other with his bare hand. After that, he threw it on the ground and began to use the regeneration skill so that the burns disappeared instantly. Song stood in front of the huge fireball and held out his sword, and his thoughts were that he wasn't sure if he could do it the first time, but he decided to try anyway. So he started charging his sword with mana so that it began to glow with a blue aura. He activated the power of the Sword Master Kai, and then the Lightning Sword Kai skill. Slashing through the air, he created a wave of mana that sliced through everything he saw. That was why he was able to cut through that fireball and let out another punch after it. Katrin, startled, began to use her shield. A curtain of fire appeared in front of her, allowing her to block the first and second strikes. She readied her magic for another attack, thinking that he would immediately counterattack. But then, all of a sudden, Dream was right behind her, holding his dagger to the back of her head. Katrin sensed this, so she closed her eyes and said that he was really incredibly strong, and she lost. Four notifications appeared, indicating that the challenger Katrin had given up and Song had won, receiving the storm skill as a reward. At this point, the dream is on the same chair that he sat down on before. Song was looking ahead with a very serious look. He also said that he decided to take part in the duel to hone his sword skills, but the opponent was quite strong, so his robe was burned in the end. Dream started tapping on the window, thinking that he should remember the name Catherine Bennett. Then, he decided to look up the information about his skill and was confused, because he thought that it was a swordsmanship, and we are talking about the skill of stabbing blows in general. His face was displeased, because he knew that he had been deceived just now. Sun decides to look at his statistics, there was one victory added and he thought that he needed to start actively growing. So he immediately started a duel with someone. They were moved to the Colosseum. Then, two contenders appeared in the arena, Han Sung Yoon and Yuji Oiwaki. Their duel started, and Song was thinking about how his opponent was ranked 11th on the Japanese server. They were facing each other, and Sun's shield hadn't recovered. Yuji said that Song was ranked 3rd on the Korean server, so he was looking forward to fighting him. But the one who appeared in front of him looked like a beggar, there was nothing to look at. Song then started to smile widely. Yuji was not happy, so he looked sullen and asked why he was laughing. Dream told him that he found it funny that they had the same thoughts. Because of Sun's words, Yuji got really angry. Therefore, he immediately launched an attack on the hero, he also shouted bad words. Song dodged the spear attack, and then he watched the spear fly past his face and thought that this was all that a contender ranked 11th on the Japanese server could do. So he just smiled and thought that he must have gotten a little too strong, since this level seems like child's play to him. In the blink of an eye, the dream caused Yuji to bleed profusely from the mouth. The notification said that Yuji had taken serious damage, so Sun won. Ah Song started to smile a lot, because he came up with a plan that this way he would be able to get a hundred skills. And so, he started another fight, which he immediately finished by cutting the neck of the green-robed guy. Then another fight, where the other guy was already hanging upside down in the air. And another one, where the kid actually flew far away. Sun won all these fights. Therefore, Song received the achievement, Dual Master, as well as his strength increased by two units. We are transported to the central lands of Murum, where there were picturesque views of the rocks and the sun shone brightly. Then we see a man sitting on a rock in the middle of a bamboo forest, and a subordinate has come to see him. The man first sat with his eyes closed, but then as soon as he heard him, he opened his eyes and asked what he needed. The subordinate bowed, and the man asked that according to him, Lee Sung Hayek was dead. The boy replied that it was true. As he continued to bow, he said that according to the latest news that he was able to get about Master Lee Sun Hayek, it was recently possible to connect to the Earth dimension. And, as they say, he made an attempt to implement the floor, when suddenly there was a roar everywhere, so that the subordinate was already a little confused and realized that apparently someone had come. In the middle of the bamboo forest, a dark figure began to appear. It was a huge beast that was growling in displeasure. This beast stood right above that man, so there was a shadow of him on it. The monster began to attack him, but he continued to sit there, saying that it had been five years since he stopped climbing to the top of the tower. Therefore, this man held out a hand that glowed with an orange aura. As a result, the sword sticking out of the stone began to come out and tremble. 
The man picked up this sword, and the monster's paw was getting closer and closer to his body. But then he jumps out from under the impact and flies up. The monster stares at him in surprise as he hovers in the air, sword in hand. The man flew down at the monster with a serious look. It landed right on his head and immediately pierced through his brain with a single punch. The beast's tongue fell out from such a blow, and lightning appeared on top of the sword. The subordinate watched all of this while the wind from their fight was around. And I thought about how easily he had dealt with such a powerful spirit creature. The young master's martial arts are so powerful that the sight of his might gives one goosebumps. The man pulled out his sword from the beast's head, asking about the earth dimension. Then he looked at his subordinate with a smile, holding the bloody sword in his hands and told him to find out who exactly killed Master Lee Sung Hayek by any means necessary. We go back to Sung, who has already entered the waiting room on the 10th floor. And then he fell on the bed. But he was so happy, because thanks to the waiting room, all his fatigue was gone so that no trace of it remained. Sun decided to open the menu to see something. He still looked up with a smile on his face and thought that in such an unexpected place, he was able to access some other powers. He opened the shop window, where there were steel wings that allowed him to fly thanks to his mana. Dream imagined him flying on those wings. He was so happy, because just thinking about flying would make his heart jump. It was an exclusive Co. 500 contract store. However, right now, he can't buy these wings due to insufficient points. Dream opened a huge number of windows, intending to do synthesis. It activated a unique skill synthesis power. So one by one, he combined the skills. And so, in the end, he managed to create three skills. Song looked at these skills with great surprise. There were three skills in total, the first was counterattack shield, the second was shadow secret step, and the last was frenetic sword play. He stretched out his hand, and it glowed all over with a red aura, and in Sun's mind, there was a B-rank shield skill among the three skills. He activated that very shield, so a huge red curtain appeared in front of him. Song looked at her with great surprise. There were a lot of notifications that said that Dream had entered the 11th floor trial, and the topic of the trial was cooperation, and they were given three hours of time for the entire trial. In the middle of a huge stone field, four portals appeared, from which players will then exit. Then there were three more notifications saying that the team members were being assigned according to their final ranking, and the team assignment was completed. First place in the ranking was Kim Soon Hoon, the guy who was wearing a mask. The other guy was wearing a magic robe and his name was Lee Young Hoon. The third is our dream, but the fourth is Sudi Gan Eu, a guy in a red business suit. They were given 30 minutes to get acquainted, during which time they must rally and attack the boss. They were all standing in front of each other, and Kim said it was a combined challenge again. But Young ran to him, shouting that it was his brother, and he also went up to the Tower of Trials. Song stared at them intently, thinking that the two of them were ranked first and second in the final ranking, and it looked like they had met before. Gong Yu stood at a distance from them and looked at Sun, and then he started shouting violently, and all the guys turned around to see what was going on. Gong Yu started pointing at Sung and shouting that it was the one he met on the fourth floor. Song didn't even remember it, so he stood there in confusion as the finger was pointed at him. Kim looked at both of them and asked that they had crossed paths on the test, and apparently from his reaction, this meeting was not pleasant. Gong Yu started shaking for show and gritted his teeth, saying that Kim was absolutely right, after all. He and Sung met on the fourth floor during the combined challenge and this hunter is someone who strives to grow by accumulating achievements for kills. Gong Yu was still shaking, and Sung just stood there and listened to the lie. Sudi Gong Yu introduces himself as the evil avatar. He stood there rubbing his beard, and it was said that for him, deceiving others was a daily occurrence, because he created conflict by turning others against each other, and used this time to get a reward. During these words, Dream imagined how the contenders were fighting with each other. Gong Yu held the crystals in his hand, and his face looked as if he had gone mad. Although deception is a survival tactic he developed, which he began to use in another place called the Tower of Trials. Sharp teeth grinned from ear to ear, and drool flowed from his teeth. It was the administrator, a lying clown who laughed at the contractor's deception until the corners of his mouth were torn with laughter. Gong Yu held onto his shoulders, pretending to be scared, but actually laughing as hard as he could. Song looked at him a little confused and thought that his expression showed that he was puzzled, so he decided to add fuel to the fire. Song started to tell him that there seemed to be a misunderstanding, and Gong Yu pointed at him, shouting that it was true because Song had brutally killed his team members. But Dream started making excuses, gesturing with his hands and saying that he was cheating. One of the guys began to take out a huge hammer from the inventory. It was Kim, who jumped at him and said that instead of a 4 where everyone kept to themselves, he preferred a 3 with good teamwork, because the Tower of Trials is not a place where you can behave lightly. His eye lit up red, and then he asked that now they will find out who is telling the truth, and then the liar will be excluded from the team. Song stood in front of everyone and thought that if something went wrong, he would have to deal with all three of them at once. Song watched with a serious look, 
because he knew that this would be the worst option. Yunkuk held up a finger and told everyone to calm down. Then, he tilted his head and asked that earlier, Challenger Sudi Gangu said that he met a hunter challenger on the fourth floor. Ganyu confirmed these words. Yunkuk spread his hands and said that it turns out that he knows the real name of the hunter's challenger, because the system with the nickname appeared in the waiting room on the fifth floor, and the two of them met on the fourth. Gangu was caught red-handed, because if he said the hunter's real name, everything would immediately fall into place. Yunkuk started to say his name slowly, and then when he said it, he divided it into two sides, one false and the other not real. And he said that his real name was Lee Kalman, knowing that it didn't make any difference since there was no way to prove his name in this place anyway. Yung pointed and asked if the hunter had anything to say about it, and Sung said that he wasn't amused at all. So he started pulling something out from under his t-shirt. It was his hunter's license, and all the information about him was written on it. After all, during the return to Earth, he mistakenly took the ID card with him, in the end it was very useful to him. That license had his name written on it, so he said it. Dong Wu was just terrified, because he knew that he was now finished. Kim began to approach him with his hammer and say that it was now clear to him who should be excluded. The administrators were laughing at Gong Wu, because he had just dug a hole for himself and he was standing with a very dissatisfied face, wondering what to do. While Kim was walking towards him, Song stopped him with his hand, saying that he would handle this matter himself. Song took out his sword and started walking towards him, saying that he was very angry right now. Kim didn't say anything at first, looking at Sung, but then replied that it should be as he decided. Gong Yu looked at this and was not so angry anymore because Song decided to attack him alone. So Gong Yu had a wicked smile on his face and he knew that even if they were looking at him with hatred, there was still hope of survival if he killed Sun. After all, the test is designed for four people and if they also exclude him, then it will be extremely difficult for the two of them to pass it. Song stood in front of Gong Yu under the moonlight and said that Gong Yu was talking about some very funny things so shouldn't he take responsibility for what he said. Ganyu spreading his arms in different directions replied that he does not know what responsibility is. Gongyu started using the book that was flying in the air and then replied in a nasty voice that he only cares about surviving in this place. And then he used his other hand to summon an ability, saying that Dream wasn't the only one with the power. Because of this ability, Sun's legs were covered with swamp spirit stalks, preventing him from moving. But he just used the magic resistance skill, so these stalks were simply destroyed. As soon as he was free, he immediately made a dash for Ganya. Song threw his arm behind his back, preparing to strike. And Ganyu summoned a shield, protecting himself from Sun's blow and saying that he also has the magic resistance skill in his arsenal. Song landed a heavy blow on Gongyu's shield, but it didn't shatter. By that time, the ground was starting to crack, so Kim started saying that they should move away, and Yung said that he liked it here, because they could fully feel the struggle between them. Kim grabbed his brother by the scruff of the neck and dragged him out, telling him to stop acting up, because there's nothing wrong with being careful. Yunkuk tearfully replied that he likes to watch everything from special places. Gongwu started yelling at Sun to die, and then started using his magic again. With this magic, he shot mana balls at Sun. Sleep calmly ran between them and dodged them, and then he threw back his hand, preparing to punch straight at him. Just the same, the blow turned out to be accurate, so he hit the gong, and the latter began to scream in pain. But then, with a snide smile on his face, he said that it seemed that the dream had become prey. Song looked back with one eye in utter incomprehension. Dream began to run away from these spheres as they flew after him from above him. He looked up and thought that these were the realms he had launched earlier. Suddenly, one of the spheres began to attack Sun, sending a huge bolt of lightning straight at him. Gong Yu started laughing and shouting that Sun was making such a tough fighter out of himself, and now what? When suddenly Gong Yu's face changed instantly, there was sweat and incomprehension on it. Ah Song used his counterattack shield to shield himself from that powerful blow. This shield allows you to take 25% of the damage, and then immediately release them in the opposite direction. Song was holding onto a shield that had a red hologram attached to it, and he asked Ganya why he was so surprised, because everything is just beginning. Gongu started to get very angry, because he didn't understand how Dream had blocked his technique so easily. And by then, Sleep was already running at him, leaving a blue trail behind his eyes. Ganyu understood the situation he was in, so he started making the most of his book. Stone pillars appeared in front of Sun, but Dream just started to jump and spin, about to slam his dagger into the rocks. So as soon as he gained speed and strength, he just started hitting those rocks. So after a couple of punches, they just fell apart, and Yun watched, asking Kim if he knew who Han Sung Yoon was. Kim also stood and watched them fight, but said that he had never seen him among high-ranked hunters. Yunkuk said that since he didn't know him, there was a high probability that he was just an ordinary civilian, but how would it be possible to become that strong? 
Kim's eyes lit up yellow and he told his brother that if Song wasn't a high-ranked hunter like them, then it wasn't easy to achieve such results. Song broke the rocks and jumped on Gong Wu's shield, and Kim said that the most amazing thing is that Song doesn't fight the enemy at full strength. Kim began to look at him and said that he felt that his level was comparable to his own. Jungkook looked at him in surprise and asked him why he was so strong, but he was two steps below him in the final ranking. Kim recalled the goblin quest and said that he had a hunch that if Team Luck had so far bypassed him in all the combined challenges, then there was a good chance that he was undervalued compared to his original skills. In Kim's mind, his back was turned proudly, but in battle, Song would stab Gong while looking down, and that punch came on Gong Wu's hand, so he just cut it open. Gong Wu screamed in pain as he held his hand, which was bleeding profusely. He fell to the ground, still holding his hand, and then Song came over with a dagger. Kim looked at him in surprise, admitting that he was shocked by Sung because he didn't kill the opponent, but simply overwhelmed him with his superiority, so he also did it as if it didn't cost him anything. Gong Wu started reaching out to him, shouting at him not to kill him. Song stood and watched him as he crawled on the ground and said that if he killed him, then maybe no one would be able to survive this ordeal. He asked him to think carefully about it, because this challenge involves the top four players, right? Then he started crying and kept shouting that in this situation, he didn't think that the Tower of Trials would give such a simple task that it would be safe to pass it even if one of the team members died. Sun was a little surprised to hear these words, so he said nothing and then turned to the guys, wanting to hear their opinions about this proposal. Kim stood next to Young and said that they wouldn't interfere, let him choose what he saw fit. While Song was looking at the guys, Gong Yu reached for his body with his whole arm and an angry expression on his face. Suddenly, he pulled out his sword, wanting to kill Sun, but the latter had already noticed his movements. And then he swung his sword with all his might and shouted that he was a scoundrel. After that, he cut Gong Yu's head in half. But it was a deception, the dream cut only the fake image, and he calmly jumped away. Gong Yu stood up with his hands hanging down, which was no longer working and bleeding. He also activated the deception skill and all his stats were instantly increased by 10 points. Gong Yu was thinking that he wanted to hide his last trump card until the very end. Gong Yu pointed his sword and chains at Sun and started shouting that he would finish him off. Song thrust his shield forward. The chain slammed into the shield and flew up. Since they were flexible and controlled, they immediately flew behind Sonu's back. At this moment, Dream activated the Grace of the Wind, so his speed is increased by 40%. Those chains hit the place where he was before, but the Dream had already run away from there and stopped somewhere else. He was right in front of Gong Wu, activating his shield. The Dream looked at him, illuminated by a red light, said that now he probably knows what is more dangerous. Get involved with someone like him, or challenge a threesome challenge. Gong Wu began to squeal in fear of losing and dying. The counterattack shield skill instantly releases accumulated damage, so the shield began to shine even brighter and then released all the accumulated damage directly into the gong, which already began to incinerate. And so, the dream received his items, these are clothes and a sword. The sword was also covered in Kai energy, so it's quite a useful item. Song held his hand at the inventory window and said that he would make good use of these items. Jung and Kim jumped down from the rocks towards Sung. Jung gave a thumbs up, saying that Sung fought superbly, and Kim said that he hoped everything was settled now. Dream replied that everything was fine now. The notification said that there were 10 minutes left before the test started. The three of them started to pass through the gorge in the cliff. There was a statue on a horse with a spear near the huge mansion. While passing under it, Jung asked that it wouldn't come to life, and Kim said that it might. Suddenly, Dream notices something. This is that the statue turned its head directly at the guys. He stared at the statue carefully. Then he walked past her and kept his eyes on her, but he didn't say anything. And now, the guys are already walking down some hall. Jung suddenly exclaims in surprise. They were standing in the middle of a building with lanterns shining and statues all around them. They noticed three statues, the first with a double dagger, and the second simply wrapped in chains. Yunkuk looked a little to the side and up, right at the statue sitting on the throne and said that it was probably the Lord Devouring Darkness. They wrote that their 30 minutes had passed, so the trial was starting, and they needed to prevent the master's resurrection. The guys got into fighting positions, because something started to happen. What happened was that the statues began to untie themselves from the chains that held them. The statues started coming at them, glowing with a purple glow. The statues just jumped off their seats, and they all landed in the arena where the guys were standing. Kim, standing in front of the statue, said that he just had all the bones cramped, and it was time for him to stretch. The dream told him that the head was there. He imagined that it was impossible for Vladika to put his head on the body. Kim started walking forward, loading his weapons with mana and said that he was glad it was so simple, so let everyone take on one target. The statues also started running at the guys, and then they all jumped at them together, preparing to strike. The three of them were ready for the fight, saying that they should wish them good luck in the fight. 
Song made a dash, throwing his sword back and thinking about how he should deal with a single attack with the Kai sword. But the statue also started attacking Son that there was a purple trail behind his sword. Dream started blocking that statue's strike, but the impact force of that statue was too strong, so the Dream just flew back and the statue pointed a sword at him, so Song thought the sword was made of Kai energy. Dream began to look thoughtfully, because in his head it was that the boss now does not seem so simple, and wondered if everything was alright with the others. And Kim also flew away from the impact of another statue. He crashed into a wall that sent rocks flying everywhere. The statue decided not to waste any time, so it ran towards Kim. The statue was already close to him, but suddenly it turned its head, because something was also flying at it. It was a huge boulder that threw the statue far away. The stone was thrown by Kim, thanks to his unique ability. He looked at it and said that each of these statues has a level to match the boss. Then he picked up his hammer, which was covered with netting, and told the boys to keep their eyes open. Suddenly, a hat appears out of nowhere, and then Yunkuk says that it seems like his brother let his guard down a few minutes ago. Then he put his hand on the hat and said that he didn't like it. And while the third statue was running at him, he said that she would pay with her life for making him wear this hat. He started loading his bow with three arrows, and then I shot them, so they flew straight at the statue. The statue began to dodge the shots, closing the distance, and then she got really close to Yunkuk. Yunkuk looked up, covering his face with his hat, and said that when dealing with mages, close combat is the standard. But then he took out a huge scythe, and he began to swing it, getting into a fighting pose, and adding that melee combat is only if the opponent is an ordinary wizard. Song watched him and was surprised, he thought that after only facing weak opponents, the sight of these people would stir his blood, and as he bounced from the statue's blows, he thought that if only he wouldn't be the weak link in the team. Then, in the air, sleep began to swirl between the rocks, and he kicked at the stones with his feet so that they flew straight into the statue, which hid its hands from them. After these strikes, he activated the wind grace skill, so his speed is now increased by 50%, and so, he ran straight at the statue with a serious look. Running under it, the statue hit the ground. At the same time, Dream stepped on her shadow, thus activating the shadow walk skill so that its power increased by three points. He was standing behind that statue and was already turning to strike. At this moment, he activated the frenetic sword play skill, his sword attack speed increased by 10%, and he also activated the sword master Kai skill. So he drew sword strikes in the air that cut through that statue. The statue began to crumble into small pieces, and Kim, who still had a trail behind his eyes, said, depth charge. Therefore, an explosion appeared under his opponent, knocking him down. The entire statue was struck by lightning, and just behind him, Dream was fighting, smashing that statue. Yunkuk twisted his side so that it made a saw. Thanks to it, he dealt damage to statues by running around in circles. Then, he jumped up with a mad look, swinging his scythe. He leapt at the statue that was blocking his strike. But this did not help her, because he broke the head, which cannot be given to the Lord. The statue began to squeal. After that, all the statues started running away, Jung didn't understand why, and Kim explained that when there were no heads left, resurrection was impossible. They decided that they had to finish up by now, so they ran straight after the statues. After exiting the arena, they continued to chase after them. Suddenly, they heard a strange sound, so Song didn't understand what that sound was. Suddenly, they saw that the statues had fallen to one knee. Dream was very surprised by this action. All three statues stood up like a springboard, and just on this springboard ran that statue on a horse. She leapt high into the sky. Dream, standing under it, looked up and remembered that it was he who was standing at the entrance. This statue on a horse immediately jumped up to the Lord. The boys immediately ran after him. But Song was very angry, because he knew that it was too late to run after him. And that statue jumped down from his horse, taking his head in his hands. Song swung his sword like a spear. And then, with a look of genuine unwillingness to lose, he threw his sword straight at that statue, a bright trail flying behind it. The statue on the horse almost put its head back in place, but she was unlucky because the dream was able to get right into her head before her formation. The statue turned to see that the head had crumbled and the crown was lying on the ground. The statue filled with anger, its eyes reddening, and then he started screaming furiously. Yunkuk was very happy that Song was able to save them, and Song let out a sigh of relief. The statue started to lift the crown, then placed it on its head. She took back her spear and turned to the boys with a terrible cry. The guys turned to look at her, and they were all shocked, so they ran straight for the statue, knowing that they had to stop it. And there the statue cut off its own head, putting a crown on it, and the guys rushed to attack all at once. But they probably didn't have time, because the statue put its head on the Lord, so that a bright light shone from under the neck, when suddenly there was a huge explosion, which threw Sun and the guys into the distance. The fog from the explosion began to dissipate, 
and then the notification wrote that the condition was fulfilled and the Lord rose from his throne with a new head, because he was resurrected. The dream looked up, directly at the master, and knew that they were in trouble. Now they have a new special task, they need to destroy the Lord. The monster looked at them and the system message said that any damage is nullified by the power of inviolability. Also, applicants whose stats were higher than that of the Lord devouring darkness would be able to inflict a wound on him. Han looked ahead and realized that he had never heard of monsters being able to use the force before. The monster reached up and grabbed the sword. After that, he immediately threw a chopping blow at the players, and they began to scatter to the sides. Han jumped back and didn't understand what kind of cheating ability it was. He realized that if dealing damage on its own was impossible, then there was absolutely nothing they could do to them. Han looked ahead, then noticed that the monster was behind him, and he started swinging his weapon and injured Han. Han jumped to the side and healed the wound he had just received. He realized then that he had too many problems on his head due to the fact that they couldn't complete this mission. After that, he hesitated and looked ahead. He looked at the monsters and began to think what might work against them. The teammates ran up to Han and asked if Sun Yun was okay. They said they had to come up with a plan to hit the Overlord, but first they had to deal with his guards. They approached him, and the Khan said that he had a request. He asked if they could detain the Lord for a while. The masked guy looked at him and said that they couldn't do any damage, so wouldn't it be more effective to clean up his guards first? Han looked at it and said that he came up with one idea. He looked at the monster and realized that it had a method that would allow it to beat the overlord. The guy fell silent, and he turned to the side and said that he would trust him. He said they wouldn't find out for a long time, so Han didn't have to pull the cat's tail. They raced towards the lord, and the Khan looked at them and decided to take action. He looked at the monster and realized that they would have to play for a while. The guy took out his hammer, which began to sparkle with lightning and struck at the lord. He used the depth charge skill. The monster stood there and gave no sign. The system message said that any damage was nullified by force and immunity. The boys ran back and realized that, as they expected, it wasn't going to do any good. The monster started to get angry and the power of the greatness sovereign was activated. Everyone should show respect to the master. Any action that does not meet this requirement will be blocked. The boys were surprised and dropped their weapons. After that, the master struck. The shockwave started to move towards the guys and one of them holding a weapon activated magic resistance. He began to slowly stand up and glow with a bright aura. The system message says that part of the body lock has been lifted. The guys looked up and saw a shockwave in front of them. One of the guys was afraid of this, but his friend heroically stood in front of him and covered the blow with his body. He began to grunt in pain and fell on his companion's shoulder. The guy asked if his brother was okay. They looked ahead and saw the Sovereign holding a sword right above them and was about to strike. He started to swing his sword, but Han immediately came to them with lightning speed and secured the sword with his shield. He apologized as he was a little late. He blocked the blow, and then he used absorption. He started collecting the souls that were lying nearby, and the system message told him to increase his stats using the ones he had from the soul. Strength was increased by 4, Agility was increased by 3, Stamina was increased by 3, Mana was increased by 6, and stamina was increased by 4. Han held his shield and his shield counterattack skill instantly released the accumulated damage of the Overlord. Han continued to stand and block the blows and the power of the Sword Master Kai was activated, as well as the Lightning Sword Kai skill activated. Han picked up his sword in his other hand, which glowed with a blue light, then he jumped up and launched a monster attack. It completely hit him and dealt him damage. Han realized that it had worked, and the monsters started shouting furiously. The system message said that the power of the Sovereign's greatness was activated. Everyone had to show respect. After that, Han couldn't control his body and he fell to the ground. His face changed and he started to try to get up, but he couldn't. After that, he activated the Force Breakthrough and Magic Resistance skill. He was able to get up, and together, where he was standing, many cracks formed on the floor. He covered himself with a green sphere and all the locks on his body were completely removed. Force Breakthrough Skill Mastery has reached 100%. The Force Breakthrough Skill has been upgraded to rank C. The Mastery of the Magic Chain Skill has been reached 100%. Skill Magic Chain Upgraded to Rank C. Skill Proficiency Magic Resistance has reached 100%. Hand blocked one more monster attack, and he realized that the situation was extremely dangerous, but he was smiling and didn't understand why he couldn't stop laughing. He looked down and guessed that it was also for the anticipation of approaching victory. The fundamental desire to become stronger burned like fire in him. 
The boys stood and watched as Han unleashed the monster's attacks. They realized that Challenger Han was a real monster. He said it was quite a strange feeling, because he never thought that he would be looking at someone's back. However, they should have congratulated him, because now the first place in the ranking belonged to him. Han continued to hold the shield and accumulate damage. Charging was completed and the counterattack shield skill reached its maximum damage absorption limit. After that, Han, holding the shield in his hand, began to emit all the damage. He stretched out his hand in front of him and realized that if he reduced the shield's area of effect, he would be able to increase the energy density. He directed the beam towards the monster and the skill shield counterattack instantly released all the accumulated damage. The monster looked at its body in horror and couldn't believe it. Han headed in his direction and was activated at the mercy of the wind. His entire speed was increased by 70%, and his current summation progress was 7 sevenths. Rampaging swordplay was activated. The attack speed on which was increased by 10%. The programming level was 10 tenths. Han delivered a crushing blow and chopped off the monster's head. The Lord of the Devouring Mountains was defeated. The administrator stood in his office and watched the whole situation through the portals. She smiled and realized that it was the bitter showing off and crazy growth that was his contractor. She understood that the usual applicants who ascended the tower were carefully prepared to not risk their lives, and they would only climb the tower one floor at a time after tirelessly spending a lot of time on their training. But Han was a valuable talent that wasn't easily seen in other dimensions. She watched him smile and deal with the monster, and she thought it could be said that he was the epitome of wanting to grow. She understood that the problem was that over time, the other administrators would also start to get more and more interested in Han and she needed to establish a closer relationship with this applicant before the other administrators did. She was standing in a field where everything was on fire, and there were dead people nearby. She did all this for the sake of achieving her desire. The monster was defeated and it fell to the ground. Vladika was defeated and Khan was congratulated on overcoming the 10th floor of the Tower of Challenge. A skill enhancement potion will be sent as a reward for breaking through his inventory. As an additional reward for breaking through, 60,000 points were credited. As a reward for the breakthrough, 2,000 Ko was awarded. Challenger Han made a great contribution to completing the special task and as a reward for the special task, another 10,000 points were awarded and as a reward for the special task, 15 Ko was awarded. Han was very happy with this and realized that the reward completely paid for the difficulty of this challenge. The guy didn't understand how he even managed to pull off such a trick. Han approached him and told him that he had a skill that was perfect for this situation, and he also had luck on his side. The masked guy pointed a finger at him, and he said that Han was able to surprise them quite a lot today and he offers to talk in more detail in a private chat by adding each other as friends. The system message posted that the applicant Kim Seung Hoon sent a friend request and Lee Jong Hoon also sent a friend request. They entered the portal and said their goodbyes to each other. Participants from 1,000 applicants have successfully broken through the 10th floor and the system expansion begins. A dimension travel category has been created in the store. Travel between dimensions becomes available. Han was surprised by this. He thinks it meant going to other dimensions, like Ares or Murum. But he wondered if that wasn't the same as signing his own death warrant. The system message said that the Earth Dimension Administrator's observation area has been expanded. Communication with the Administrator is possible even in the waiting room. The Earth Dimension Administrator's intervention area has been expanded, and an additional contract with the Administrator and transfer to his personal ownership has become available. However, an additional contract could only be concluded once, after which additional contracts will be limited. The supplementary contract can also be terminated at any time. Han was surprised by this and realized that an additional contract is when he cooperates with the administrator who signed the official contract. And there is also one more party this is an additional contract, and he can terminate it at any time. Han wondered if the contract could be terminated at any time was I only losing one administrator. Han knew that he couldn't know for sure right now, so he opened the system window and said that first he should have dealt with what he had managed to get on the 10th floor. He looked at the skill enhancement potion which was a specially crafted tower for creatures with skills. When taking it, Han could randomly raise proficiency level 1 from his skills by 20%. He drank this potion and was asked to choose a skill to increase proficiency with. He wiped his mouth with his hand and decided to increase the wind favor skill. The selection was completed and the favor to the wind skill increased by 20%. The skill was reached 100%, so it went to the next level. The effect of this skill was that when Han spoke the names of skills, all speeds increased by 10%.
This effect could be summed up, and this ability could be played up to seven times. By the time he reached the final summation, 1% of his total magic power would be consumed every minute. Han, I was surprised that the cooldown time was gone. He recalled the monster he had just defeated and decided to consume its soul as the next step. He absorbed it to permanently increase his stats. He was able to increase his strength by 5, agility by 4, stamina by 4, mana by 7, and stamina by 5. He completely absorbed one of the Dark Devouring Lord's skills. It was a mana management skill. The effect was that as far as using magic power was concerned, it was a step into the realm of innate talent, removed most of the restrictions related to mana management. However, the skill's proficiency was only raised by self-enlightenment, and the frequency of use did not affect the skill. Han started thinking while looking at the screen and realized that he could now control mana like someone who had an innate talent for it. But there was no point in just standing there and looking at it. Han was surprised when he saw a lot of invitations from various administrators to his domain. He didn't understand why it all happened at the same time. Following which, an invitation came from Lord Steelblood. Han accepted it and was transferred to the world of Steelblood. The Khan was back in her domain and began to approach her house. The receptionist came out of the house wearing only a towel. She started laughing and said that she knew Han would choose her. Han stood and watched in silence. The receptionist said that thanks to Han, she won the argument. Han stood there and silently wondered why they sent the invitation at the same time, and it was all related to an argument. They walked forward, and Han asked if she was cold. She said she couldn't. The receptionist asked why Han didn't ask any questions. He looked at her and said that he had accidentally obtained the mana control skill. He asked her if she knew anything about it. The receptionist said that Han had obtained an extremely powerful skill. She held up her hand and said that before they returned to the hut, she would give him a cursory explanation. She said to use a newly acquired skill to maximize the magic power in your body. Han began to concentrate and stretched his arms out in front of him. He opened his eyes and felt like there were dots inside his body that were gathering mana. He used the skill and the system message said that the magic control was being activated and had a strong effect on the magic circuit in his body. Logic chain skills are forcibly upgraded with mana management skills. He leaned forward and was surprised, as he felt as if his physical prowess had increased several times. He decided to test it by hitting the ground. The shockwave was so strong that the receptionist started covering his face, and after the towel flew out, Han looked up and was surprised. After that, they were in the house and drinking tea. The receptionist said she didn't think Han was the kind of person who would pull such a trick. Han choked on his tea, and he said it was just a misunderstanding. The receptionist smiled and said that Han was at a loss. She told Han to activate mana using skills from time to time with mana management anyway. With this technique, he could increase his stats. She said that no matter how one's understanding of mana management changed, the skill would be able to stimulate the growth of each skill. Han then asked her why she sent him. They were sitting at a table, and the receptionist said that after entering the waiting room on the 11th floor, Han received a notification about the expansion of the system. The receptionist said that because of this, she was able to come here without going through the tower. Han ate a cookie and the administrator said that only the extension was not limited to such a function as the intervention zone. She said the real goal was to finally make sure that the administrator can seriously nurture applicants. Han asked what that meant. The receptionist reached out and snapped her fingers. She said that this meant that Administrator Lord Steelblood was transmitting the power of the contract using the interference zone. A new power was engraved on the soul. Han's chest began to glow and the power of the blood-colored sword was etched into his soul. Han asked the receptionist if she couldn't have used her power like this before. She said she couldn't have had her already paid for the appropriate price of the tower. Han realized that the additional contracts feature was also open, so it might be better to find another bidder, but he didn't understand why she chose him. He asked her why she was so active in helping him. The receptionist said she did it because she saw it as a huge opportunity. Han asked what possibility she had in mind. The administrator said that other administrators were rewarded by developing their applicants, but this was by no means their ultimate goal. Han was surprised when he heard that everyone seemed to have invested in one or another bidder to fulfill their long-held wishes. The system message said that the White Crane Sword Administrator had invited him to his domain, and he had invited him many times while Han was sitting at the table. The receptionist looked at him with a smile and said that for those who were too impatient, she would finish her story there. And besides, she delivered it safely. They said their goodbyes, and Han accepted the invitation and carried out the move into the administrator's possession. He found himself in the forest and started walking forward. 
He thought about it and realized that the huge clearing was perfect for training. He realized that he was just curious to master the training method that Lord Steelblood had taught him. He used mana controls and threw a few punches. The mastery of the three absolute skill has been increased by 8%. Due to the mana management skill, the instant acceleration skill was forcibly upgraded with the mana management skill, and the instant acceleration skill's rank was forcibly changed to B rank. Han used a shield and the skill proficiency of the counterattack shield skill was increased by 7%. Han took out his sword and realized that he would now increase the power of the Kai Swordmaster as well. Han took his sword in hand and was shocked when he realized that he couldn't activate Sword Kai with mana control. He wanted to raise the rank of the Lightning Sword Kai skill through strength, but as far as he didn't try, it was all useless. He assumed that it was because the Sword Master Kai was a force. The system message said that the White Crane Administrator was waiting for his visit. He took a look at this and decided to put aside the issue of skill growth with Kai energy for now. He went forward through the forest and a system message wrote that the White Crane Sword Administrator was puffing out his cheeks and agreeing with him. He looked at the bamboo and other trees that grew there and realized that judging from the title of Administrator, he must be an old man like Lee Sung Hak. He arrived at the place and saw the building in front of him, where the Administrator is sitting. She looked at him and said it was a pleasure to meet Han. She was wearing a white kimono and had white hair and pink eyes. She said that she was the Administrator of the White Crane Sword. She said that she had been waiting for a very long time for an applicant like him to appear. Han was surprised that it wasn't an old man, but a teenage girl. The girl sat there and asked if Han had a problem. Han said that he was just surprised to see an administrator in front of him who he only corresponded with. The girl said that she understood him perfectly and said that it was not very convenient to talk standing up, so she suggested that he go to another place. Han sat down and was surprised that he was very refreshed. He looked at the girl and said that he understood why she threw the chairs and sat on this floor. The girl smiled and said that she had always been watching him from here, from the moment he got into a life and death battle with Lee Sung Hak on the ninth floor until now. Han realized that she had been watching him since the surveillance was allowed, but wasn't it a waste to sponsor an applicant that she had only seen once? The receptionist said that wasn't the case and Han should have been more aware of his value. Although Lee Sun Hak couldn't reach the highest rank of proficiency and released Kai energy, he was still considered quite a strong Miram warrior. Although he had lost some of the power he possessed after entering the tower, defeating such a challenger could be rightfully called a feat. Han was surprised that the receptionist asked him to believe her, since she was bound to Lee Sun Hak by a contract. Han looked at her and realized that if she did, she must have a grudge against him. The place where they were talking was quite calm and butterflies were flying. The girl said that there was no point in escalating the situation and he was just a good contender for points. The girl stretched out her finger, and the butterfly flew up to her. She said that she had signed contracts with a lot of applicants in her life, but she had never invited anyone to her domain before. Han looked at the butterfly and listened to everything the receptionist said. She said that everything was fine until she saw it thanks to Lee Sung Hak. She put her hand to her chest and said that she thought Han had already guessed what was going on, so she would tell him straight out. She asked him to sign an additional contract with her. Han thought about it, then asked if there were any benefits he could get if they did that. The administrator said that if he signed a contract with her, then she could make him an apostle of the White Crane Sword Administrator. Han asked again what benefits he would get from becoming her apostle. The administrator said that in the tower, the term apostle meant applicants who entered into a special contractual relationship with the administrator. The latter can only assign one person to the apostles in his entire life, and only applicants who have become apostles can acquire all the powers of an administrator. Han was surprised by this and realized that the contract of patronage was so important. He realized that Lord Steelblood had offered him a contract of patronage, but hadn't bothered to tell him about such important nuances. He realized that it was too harmful. The girl sat and listened to Hana. He said that in the Tower of Trials, it was said that an additional contract was a contract that could be broken at any time. Han asked why she was offering him the protection that could only be granted to a suitor once in their lifetime. On such favorable terms, she said that as this woman, she chose him to fulfill her long-held wish. She said that she needed the sharpest sword in the world, a better sword that would never break or become blunt, and she saw that Hanu had a huge potential to be sharper than any sword. She saw him as a strong man, and Han realized that the Steelblood Lord had also mentioned this wish, and it didn't seem like a simple wish. Han looked at her and asked her what a long-standing wish was. The girl looked ahead and said that the administrator's long-standing wish was memories that came from the regret of the past. 
and at the same time, a long-standing wish is a right given to the tower administrator. Similar tower trials, a long-standing wish was also a kind of test that the administrator could give to the bidder with whom the contract was signed. When the long-standing wish was fulfilled, the bidder would receive a reward. The administrator said that if you suddenly manage to fulfill an old wish, you can even change the events of the past. Han was extremely surprised by this. He asked if it was really possible to change an event in the past, and he said that it was absolutely impossible. The administrator said that since Han had been through the tower trials so many times before, he must have understood perfectly well that she was telling the truth or what she wanted. Han silently looked at her and remembering all the events. He realized that this was true, because if it was about the tower, he asked if he could just ask a single question. The administrator agreed, and Han asked to fulfill her wish, how high he should climb in the Tower of Trials. The girl thought about it, and she said that it should be at least the last floor. After that, the system message wrote that the contract was concluded. The girl was very happy, and she said that Khan made a great choice and he would not regret it for anything. She started shaking his hand, and Han ended up making a contract with her. But even in the tower, it was his goal to fulfill the administrator's long-held wish. A system message wrote that Han had been recognized as the true apostles of the White Crane Sword Administrator. As an apostle's privilege, the effectiveness of Murum Dimension powers and skills increases by 10%. As an apostle's privilege, Mana has increased by 3. Currently, Challenger Han is recognized as an apostle by two administrators. As a privilege of two administrators, agility was increased by 3. Han couldn't miss out on this kind of advantage, which would allow him to immediately become stronger. He looked at the girl who was pulling out the sword, and he knew that he had also received an unexpected gift. Han was about to leave, and the girl asked if he could have heard anything from the woman. The girl said something about the creature that Hanu was looking for. Khan said he hadn't heard anything about him. The girl closed her eyes and raised a hand to her head. She asked what Lord Steelblood was thinking. She assumed that the woman had a strong belief in Han's power. She smoothed her hair and said that of course she believed in him too, but still felt that she should have warned him too. What she was going to say from now on would use up his tickets for the question. Whether Han agreed to this, Han thought about it and agreed. He said not to use them anyway and they just accumulated in his inventory. System message, all question tickets belonging to the challenger, Han, will be used up. Han was surprised, because such a huge number of tickets will be used up in one time. He wondered just how serious a topic of discussion this was. The administrator said that there was a huge force in the Murum dimension called the Murum Ally, and Lee Sung Hak, whom he killed on the ninth floor, held an important position as a commander in this alliance. The receptionist said that because of his high position, there were people from the Murum dimension who were looking for Hana. Han realized that the girl wanted to tell him that the Murum Union would pursue him to kill him. The administrator said that this was not the case, because the Murum Union was currently in disarray due to the struggle for the vacant position of commander. Han asked who was sharpening their teeth on him. The girl said that it was the Namgoon family's dragon sword. After that, we are transported to Tokyo, Shinjuku, where the portal was opened. Sky Dragon Sword Namgoon Hayuk. He came out of the portal and was a creature that was called a genius in the Murum dimension, where everyone was obsessed with martial arts. He was looking for Hana and using revenge as an excuse. But in reality, they're just curious. Many different hunters attacked him and tried to stop him. She doesn't know when this will happen, but if Han runs into him, then he must be prepared to risk his life, because all those who attacked him were defeated by his sword. The system message said that a move to the waiting room had been made. Han appeared in the waiting room and looked away. He thought about Namgoon Hayuk and realized that a psychotic Murum Dimension killer was looking for him. He opened the system screen and started tapping on it. He started to think about going to those dimensions himself, but then realized that it was just ridiculous. The system message said that Power Steel Wings had been purchased. 1,500 ko were spent. Purchase of a Return Stone. Hana held the Stone of Return in his hand, which glowed with a bright light and realized that he had learned something new. But this did not change anything. He realized that he had no choice but to level up like crazy before he met this Namgoon Hayuk. The system message absorbed the return stone, and the destination was Earth. Han appeared in his room and immediately looked at his phone. He was surprised when he saw the missed calls from Ha and unread messages. Ha wrote him that as soon as Han read the message, he should immediately go to the Hunter Association. Han didn't know what was going to happen. The system message said that steel wings had been activated. Wings appeared behind Han, and he immediately headed forward. After that, we see the Hunters Association and a lot of people who were there. 
they didn't say that they were glad that it wasn't a forced mobilization. One of them said that, judging by the video, he is really ruthless and bloodthirsty. He did not understand what would happen to Japan now. One of the men looked up and was shocked by what he saw. At the same time, Han landed gracefully on the ground in his red suit. He raised his hand and asked for forgiveness, then went to the Hunters Association. People didn't understand how this man had just flown. Han went to the Hunter Association and saw a man in front of him who was very happy to see him. He assumed that Han had gone through a lot of difficulties in the tower. Ha also greeted him. Han greeted them and asked them what had happened and why they had to come here immediately. Ha put his hand on his chest and said that there was a serious incident in Japan right now. She said that she was very worried that Han would have gone to Japan alone if he found out about the incident, so he had to be contacted as a matter of urgency. The guy picked up the remote and pressed the button. He thinks that the conversations weren't very effective and it's better for Han to see for himself what happened here. The screen began to show videos from the body cameras of Japanese salary officers published in Japan. It showed a dark spot that appeared in the sky. The setting was Shinjuku, Tokyo. The Japanese Hunter Association formed a response team and sent seven A-rank hunters to the scene. But the person who appeared from the O-portal shockingly killed six A-rank hunters in just a few seconds. And it is assumed that this is the first time that a challenger from another world has invaded the Earth dimensions. Han thought about it and asked about the hunters. He asked the protect that had just left. He asked if they were trying to put together a team to support Japan. The man said that in such a situation without applicants, almost all countries focused on protecting their hunters, not allowing the outflow of hunting resources to Japan. He said the same was true for Korea. He said they did not recommend providing support to Japan. The man pressed the button and said that this body camera is the only survivor. The man covered himself with his hands from the man who approached him, and the man shouted for him to spare him. The guy looked at him with a cold-blooded look, and the guy who came out of the portal introduced himself, calling himself Namgoon Hayek, Sky Dragon Sword, came to avenge Lee Su Hak. He asked the survivor to pass it all on. Han realized who the man was. He couldn't imagine them crossing paths with him like this. Han looked to the side and saw Ha tugging at his sleeve. She asked why Han had such a serious expression on his face. She said that it wasn't a forced mobilization and that it was the first time they had met after such a long time, so she suggested that they all have lunch together first. Han looked ahead and tried to say something. Ha interrupted him and asked if he was going to go to this mobilization. Han said that he would respond to the Japan call and go to the Shinjuku area of Tokyo. She asked him why he always acts so recklessly, because he should also be able to think a little about other people's feelings. Han put his hand on her head and said that he thanked her for bothering him, but it was a problem that needed to be solved and it had to be done by him. After that, he turned to the side and walked forward. After that, we see a young boy holding a sword that glowed with a bright fire. There were also three teenagers nearby who were holding one injured person, and he called out to the young master and told him that it was just sparring but he was hitting hard enough. After that, another person came up to them and said that at the age of 13, mastering the released Kai energy was simply amazing and his achievements surpassed even all of his own. A man stood in front of them and was greeted. It was the swordmaster who put his hand on the boy's head and asked him to listen to him. He said that martial arts is not meant to harm people. Martial arts are the path to excellence. The boy stood and listened in silence. The man said that it was impossible to hurt people just for no reason. After the system message, I wrote that the test tower was selecting the strongest players in the Murum dimension. All the people were cheering that their young master had already reached 20 floors of the tower. Already grown up, the boy thought that he was missing something. It was damning that climbing the tower on his own didn't satisfy his desire. He went forward and such an incredible feat was accomplished in just 17 years. He apologized to his mentor. He has committed the right to spatial invasion countless times and is killing people with incredible ferocity. He said that what he expected was nothing more fun than just killing. He was sitting in a car where everything was burned down and said that he was no longer satisfied with the death of ordinary idiots, and in the Murama dimension, he couldn't kill whenever he wanted. For some reason, he felt that that fool named Han would be able to dispel his doubts. After that, we see Han walking forward, and a plane flies over from above. In front of him, the girl pointed to the car and said get in there. After that, he and the guards rushed forward and the girl escorted him into the building. She asked me to go inside, as other hunters would be waiting there. He looked inside and there were two guys with whom he passed the 10th floor. One of them said that after the trial on the 10th floor, fate brought them together again. Another said that the con came later than he thought. Han stopped by and said that he had heard in the Hunter Association as well of their possible involvement, 
but they really came here. Han asked if these were all the hunters who responded to Japan's summons. One of the guys said that one more applicants from America should arrive any minute. Han looked at the whole situation and realized that it was safe to say that each of the three of them had the skills of an S-rank hunter. But the challenger from the other world that appeared in the Shinjuku area was a real monster that even the three of them might not be able to defeat. He confidently looked ahead and hoped that the challenger who was supposed to come from America would be just as strong. Then the door started to open, and Han looked away. He was surprised to see Catherine standing in front of him. Catherine came in and saw Hana. The girl who accompanied Hana asked if they knew each other. Han said it was true, because they had crossed paths in the tower once. Catherine looked away and said that she didn't want to meet him under such circumstances. Han asked if they could have met in any other way. Catherine clenched her hands into fists and said that she wanted their meeting to take place in a more normal environment. Han said that they originally met in an environment far from normal. So how did she plan to arrange a normal meeting? Han asked. The girl said that he was right about that. But couldn't you have said the same thing in a milder way? The masked guy looked at it all and said it was like a love fight. Katrin was surprised, and Han said that wasn't the case. Katrin didn't know what kind of person he was. All she had to do was say no, but she didn't know why he was adding it. The girl who accompanied raised her hand and pressed it to her chest. She said that finally all the applicants had gathered and she apologized for the late show. She introduced herself and her name was Ari Chika, and she was the president of the Japan Hunter Association. Han was surprised to learn that she was the president of the Japan Association. He realized that when the girl came to meet him at the airport, it was probably because there was a full-time employee of the association in front of him. He realized that this must mean that Japan was now in despair. The girl spread her arms and said that no more support was expected. She said the situation was more serious than anticipated, so other countries were carefully monitoring the dispatch of their hunters. One guy said that even if it was about violent control, how could only four people come from all over the world? Catherine said the situation was much worse than she had imagined. The president began to tremble and said that currently no one wanted to help her. She bowed low in front of the hunters and said that you four who came here situations where everyone turned away she is sincerely grateful. Han immediately walked over to her and grabbed her by the shoulders. He told her to put her head up and said that now was not the time to bend her back. Katrin watched all of this, realized that this man named Han looked outwardly emotionless, and was about to change her mind about him. But Han told the president to make her look like they had a higher reward. Katrina did not expect such a response, and Khan put his hand to his chest and said that he really asks to increase the promised reward by two times and then they will actively support her to solve the problem. Catherine realized that everything was as she thought. Khan was just a stale cracker. Han looked ahead and smiled and realized that it was growth. He didn't come here to be a hero or to show his humanity. He said that he was only interested in the reward and growth he would get if he killed Namgoon Hayek. The president agreed and said that in such a crisis situation, she was too emotional, and the creature that appeared in the Shinjuku area is definitely not a standard monster, as they will have to risk their own lives and they promise to double their reward. Afterward, she pointed at Catherine and said that it wasn't just that the situation was hopeless, she said that they had chances too and Catherine Bennett's abilities could make a difference in this battle. She said that she had the power of flame suppression, and if she can touch a stronger opponent than her with her flame, then all of the opponent's stats will drop by 10, and some of their skills will be randomly sealed. Everyone in this room was surprised by this ability, and Catherine squeezed the flame in her sleeve and said that if only I could touch it, it would happen. Han looked down and said that they should create a situation where she would have a chance to use her power on the enemy. After that, they flew to the place by helicopter. The latest news was such an S-rank Chinese hunter Peng Jiwen, who single-handedly went to the Shinjuku area to provide support, had just met challengers from another world. He was standing in front of the opponent who had also appeared from the portal, and they were looking at each other. They didn't move, but they both looked like they were talking to each other. They assumed that such a situation was indeed possible, and as far as they knew, all applicants in the trial could talk to each other regardless of dimension or country. The guy who was sitting in the car asked the other if he was Han Sung Yoon. The guy, on the other hand, smiled and said that he was Peng Jiwen from China. He slapped his hands together and said that he would make him regret looking at the Earth dimension so disdainfully. The guy from Murama went behind his back and said that he didn't understand why the one who was told to show up didn't come, and they showed only bugs around. Peng then made a lunge and punched the guy in the face. He didn't expect this and realized that it was a fist technique. 
He was curious and opened his eyes. Fang was shocked by what he saw, but a second later there was a huge explosion, which sent up a lot of dust, because of which nothing could be seen. The hunters watched all this from the helicopter, and they realized that the Chinese hunters started acting alone. The situation was far from good, and Han asked Katrin if she would be able to land properly if she was in the air. Katrin said she didn't understand what Han was talking about. Han said that he had one good idea. He said there was a skill called frequency jump, and Katrin said it made her immune to all fall damage. Han said that was enough, and if the plan worked, he would be able to hit him hard enough. He said that at this point, K3 would need to activate his power immediately. Han apologized and grabbed Katrin. Katrin was embarrassed and asked what he was going to do. After Han activated the power of steel wings, he jumped off the helicopter and they flew down together. The other guys looked on with a smile, and one of them said that Han went out of his way to do everything on his own. The masked guy said they couldn't just stand there and watch, and then they jumped off the helicopter. Katrin said that Han really was crazy. She asked where it was seen that in such a situation a person would rush into flight without giving any explanation. Han said he was glad that the Chinese hunter had made Namgoon Hayek lose his temper. Katrin wondered if Han was even listening to her. Han said that as soon as it opened, he should immediately use his power. Han released her, and Katrin flew off alone. Namgoon fought against Pan. Pang was tense and his weapon was broken. Namgoon said that he wasn't even able to properly concentrate the Kai energy in his fist, but he used this fist technique. Namgoon hit him with her hand, and he was sent flying far enough away. Namgoon threw a sweeping punch, then stood up and looked ahead. After which, he noticed something approaching from the side. He noticed it and was knocked down by it, followed by a huge explosion. The dust cleared and Namgoon started to get to his feet. His arm was bruised. Han started walking towards him with his sword in hand, and he exhaled. Han said that falling from the real sky was something that could be done twice. Namgoon looked at him and asked who he was. Han smiled and said that he had been looking for him so desperately, and when he met him face to face, he didn't know who it was. 